70s and sunny. Doesn't exactly feel like December, but for these kids playing football in the final month of the year is the only thing they dream about. The TAP six-man Division II championship coming your way next on TAPS TV. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside the broadcast booth. Mike Leslie joined by uh, Matt Tarbutton and Gabe Duarte once again for the D uh, Division II six-man state championship game. Harvest Christian and New Braunfels Christian, a uh, Wildcats team, New Braunfels, that went 11-1 and this year, but a Harvest Christian team uh, pretty substantially favored, I think you could say, in this football game, 13-0 on the year, won their state semifinal 53-8, a very, very talented football team. Absolutely should be a great matchup. You've got the undefeated Harvest Christian team. Uh, they've pitched eight shutouts this season. And then you've got new, a New Braunfels team with one loss. Uh, they have never scored fewer than 52 points so far this season. have scored into the 80s three times. So they'll be tested today, but it should be a good game. Yeah, we're definitely going to have some excellent football played. We're going to have some very physical football played here this afternoon. Obviously, weather's not going to be an issue. I think it should be in store for a great game today. Somewhat similar to our first game uh, this morning in the Division Three matchup, uh, a team making a trip back to the state championship game after losing in the state title last year. That's Harvest Christian. Last year lost to Bracken Christian in the championship game and uh, kind of deemed 2019's motto as unfinished business. They certainly want to come out here and finish off a 14-0 perfect run through the season and claim a, D a uh, Division Two state championship. Should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Uh, meanwhile, for uh, NBCA, their second trip to the title, second trip rather to the uh, championship game, they went back in 2016 as well. This is a team that really had a, a very impressive season, but just has uh, kind of kind of a monster standing in front of them in Harvest Christian. What do you think they need to do to be able to knock off a team as, as talented as Harvest Christian is? I think with New Braunfels Christian, they're just going to have to do what's got them here. You know, obviously running the ball well, being able to spread it out and throw. But I think the biggest thing for them is they've got to limit turnovers and they've got to take care of the ball. Because the, the hardest thing, especially against a team like Harvest that is good offensively, good defensively, you've got to limit your mistakes. Make the other team, you know, make the mistakes over you. If you can play a, you know, close to as mistake-free game as you can, you know, that'll bode well for you. Joshua Wood, the head coach at New Braunfels Christian, said this has become the expectation here. They, they expect to be playing for and competing for state championships year in and year out. And for uh, the second time in four seasons, they are here in the title game, 17 and 18 lost in the state semifinals. So this is a team that is used to success, but trying to claim a state championship today against a very talented Harvest Christian team. Uh, I get into some players to watch from each of these two schools. First for Harvest Christian, uh, Duncan Severance, a wide receiver, also a bit of a defensive lineman for them on the other side of the football, does just about everything for this Saints team. Yeah, Duncan is a, a great player, great senior leader for him. You know, he's one of the, I believe, five seniors that Harvest has for, uh, you know, this group and, and great leader, not only on the football field, but off the field and in other sports as well. You know, definitely one of those team leaders that, you know, leads by his word, but obviously also leads by his actions and the way he plays. Yeah, five seniors on this Harvest Christian roster. Severance, Corbin Fowler, Hudson Hayes, Hunter Estill, and then the uh, fifth senior is uh, Hudson Hayes. Uh, all five of them see significant time, both on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. In a lot of ways, guys, they're practically the only guys that do see the field. They only play six, seven, maybe eight guys offensively and defensively, and it's the same group. Yeah, that's for sure going to be a thing to watch today because obviously if you look at New Braunfels' Christian roster, they've got you know, 20 – 20, 25-plus kids, and so they're able to rotate a little bit more, show a little bit more depth. So, you know, we hope to not see any injuries. I mean, obviously you want each team to be at their full strength and have a great game. But, you know, if somebody gets tired, somebody gets hurt, that, you know, could hurt Harvest, obviously just being with a smaller group. Yeah, Harvest with just 15 on their roster. Meanwhile, player to watch for New Braunfels Christian is their running back, Luke Bales. Just a fantastic running back. His head coach, Josh Wood, had a lot of really nice things to say about him. Strong, fast, that he ran a 4-5-40 at a Liberty football camp this past summer. And as a matter of fact, that kind of turned into an opportunity for him at the next level. He's going to go play football at Liberty next year. Um, but uh, for the time being... He's going to be a load for Harvest Christian to deal with this afternoon. Oh, for sure. The name of the game in six-man football is speed. If you've got it and you've got it in spades, it helps. And, and he's, you know, definitely showed it over the season. And I think if 
if New Braunfels Christian can do some great blocking for him, allow him to get to the edge, allow him to hit those holes, it's going to spell trouble for Harvest. So if he can if he can execute and do his job, it, you know, might bring that you know coveted state title home to the Wildcats. Gabe, when you look at this matchup, what uh, what jumps off the page of you? What do you think? Uh, what do you think these two teams need to do to be able to come away with a championship today? Uh, I, I think Matt sort of uh, laid the roadmap there. It's all going to go through the running game of, of New Braunfels, and if they can take advantage of their speed, uh, then they have a chance in this game. Otherwise, Harvest Christian is going to be looking at a perfect season. Head coaches for today for Harvest Christian, Perry Myers in his sixth year, 54 and 19 in that span. And for NBCA, Joshua Wood in his third year, 30 and 8 over the course of those three years, 9, 10, and 11 wins in successive years. Just keeps getting better at New Braunfels, and uh, they're trying to add a 12th win today and win a state championship. The TAP six-man Division II state championship game is coming your way in just about 12 minutes. We'll step aside here on TAPS TV and come back just in time for kickoff in just a moment. We'll be right back. Back at Panther Stadium, let's see the starting lineups for today's football game. First for NBCA on the offensive side of the ball, Drew Campbell, Court Kaler, and Jaden Grimsley across the offensive line. Mason Grimsley, the twin brother of Jaden, is the quarterback. Luke Bales, the running back, we mentioned him a little bit ago, and Gavin Kelly, the fullback, who will slide to center in their spread offense look. Defensively for NBCA, EJ Easterly is the defensive end on the left-hand side. Drew Campbell, their defensive tackle. Gavin Kelly, the other defensive end. Mason Lemmy and Brady Hines, their two defensive backs. And R.C. Skelton, a 5'11", 185-pound junior, is the middle linebacker. Offensively for Harvest Christian. Again, we mentioned it before. It's going to be pretty much the same six or seven kids that you're hearing all game long for Harvest Christian. Quarterback is Hunter Estill. Bradley Peterson, the running back. Wyatt Green, their fullback. Corbin Fowler and Hudson Hayes on the offensive line. And Duncan Severance with his 20 touchdowns on the year is the wide receiver. Defensively for uh, Harvest Christian, again, the same six guys. Severance, Hayes, and Green across the defensive line. Estill, the defensive back on the left side. Isbill, Ethan Isbill on the other side. And Corbin Fowler, the middle linebacker. Head coach Perry Myers calls him the general. We'll send it to the field now. Time for a pregame prayer and the national anthem.
Captains for today's game for Harvest Christian, Hunter Estill, Corbin Fowler, and Duncan Severance, three seniors. For New Braunfels Christian Academy, Rhett Elrod, one of their two quarterbacks, E.J. Easterly, Mason Lemmy, Luke Bales, and Andrew Campbell as we are about ready for the coin toss at midfield. About five minutes away from kickoff here in the Division II six-man state championship game. Harvest Christian and New Braunfels Christian Academy squaring off. 13-0 on the year, Harvest Christian was. 153-8 over Allen Academy in the state semifinals. New Braunfels Christian last week, a 56-34 win over Covenant Christian in their semifinal game. Each of these teams lost in the state semis a year ago. Harvest Christian against Bracken Christian in the semifinal. Or beg your pardon, in the, uh, yeah, in the, excuse me, yes, in the state semifinals to Bracken Christian, 62-24. And uh, New Braunfels lost to Alpha Omega Academy in the other state semifinal, 58-57. This year, both teams get one stage further and play each other for a state championship. Yeah, it should be an exciting game, obviously, with both these teams, you know, really kind of clawing their way back into this, this championship game. You know, it's obviously the last couple years have been close, but not be able to get back, so... It's good to see these two teams, you know, really put in the hard work this season, um, you know, stay healthy. That's usually one of the biggest keys people I don't think talk about, especially in six, man. You've got to stay healthy, you know, especially if one or two of your best players goes down. It's, it's hard to, hard to you know, really um, finish the way you want to. So it's good to see these two teams here, too, um, you know, very class coaches with uh, Josh Wood and Perry Myers. You know, Perry Myers, a uh, graduate of Midway High School, played defensive line for him, pretty, pretty good uh, – Pretty good athlete there, especially at the 5A level at the time. So good to see him kind of have a homecoming, as you would say. Our referee, Tom Cremens, lets us know that Harvest Christian won the toss and deferred, which means New Braunfels Christian Academy will receive the opening kickoff here in half number one. If you're watching along with this, New Braunfels Christian is in the green, green jerseys, green pants. Harvest Christian, white with white. We mentioned the rather warm temperature for a December game here in Midway. There is a significant wind blowing, has been blowing all day. It seems to have pick, picked up just a little bit, so it'll be interesting to see what impact that will have on either of these teams as the game unfolds. Yeah, we definitely saw in the earlier game with Fredericksburg Heritage and Weatherford Christian, especially when you had to go against the wind, it was tough to make those accurate passes. So, um, you know, I know New Braunfels Christian can run our throw, so we'll see if it kind of forces either of this team to, or teams, excuse me, to, uh, to be kind of one-dimensional, at least when they're going against the wind. 
as you mentioned, New Braunfels certainly has the ability to throw or pass, uh, excuse me, throw or run. The tight formation that we gave as the starters today with Mason Grimsley in there, a quarterback. Rhett Elrod will be in there more as a spread back, and he's the one that will throw the football certainly more so than Grimsley will. The way that they run their offense, Grimsley's as much of a fullback as he is a quarterback. will usually hand off and then, or pitch it back and then go be the lead blocker. But it will be Harvest Christian to kick the ball away to start this one off. Duncan Severance, the kickoff specialist. We mentioned earlier that he does just about everything for this Saints football team, and that includes kicking the ball away. Mason Lemmy deep to return for New Braunfels as right on cue the wind knocks the football off the tee. Twice in the, I don't know, seven minutes that I was down on the field pregame, I saw baseball hats blown off of two different guys' heads. It's not, uh, not conducive to the kicking or passing game with how strong the wind is blowing from our right to left as you look at the screen. Severance with the aid of that wind sends it through the end zone and through the 11-man end zone as well. It'll be a touchback, and we'll see New Braunfels come on the field for the first time today. We'll see whether or not they try to uh, challenge the wind with their passing game. Looks like New Braunfels Christian probably going to come out and run a little bit. Obviously got some size. Uh, out there on the field. Be interested to see how Harvest handles that size. Harvest, pretty athletic group, uh, you know, pretty good size, but not overall, you know, just kind of dominating size. They do go with a tight formation here on first and 15 from their own 20-yard line. Grimsley under center. And very quickly hit right at the line of scrimmage as Luke Bales coming through to make the tackle as Corbin Fowler. Give him maybe a yard on the play. Fowler not fooled for a second. He closed quickly and was able to bring down the back. Team leading 106 tackles on the year for Corbin Fowler, leading the way for the Harvest Christian defense. His head coach, Perry Myers, calls him the general. Fowler has a couple D3 offers on the, uh, on the table for him. He's also the guy who kind of makes the calls for their defense. Once again, NBCA going tight. Pitch it back to Bales once again, and he'll push the pile forward for a couple of yards. A little extracurriculars after the play as Hunter Estill went flying. Yeah, football is always going to be a physical game, and obviously you got two, you know, pretty, pretty dominant teams here in the state championship game. So, especially you know, early on might see a little bit of chippiness just because you know uh, people really want to start out well, especially in this ball game. Third down and 12 here for the Wildcats offense, and again they go tight. Bales shrugs off the first tackler, able to get out to the 40-yard line, and that'll make fourth down somewhat manageable. Fourth down, they're going to mark it at the 39, so it'll be fourth and six. Ball sitting at their own 29-yard line, so they would certainly surrender good field position to Harvest Christian if they can't get the first down, but probably not so deep in their own territory that they won't uh, go for it here. Brady Hines is New Braunfels punter if they decide to go in that direction, but it does not appear they will. Fourth down and six, and they're in the tight formation once again. Bales dotting the straight eye behind Mason Grimsley. A little bit of miscommunication in the backfield, and the pitch goes nowhere. Yeah. Grimsley and Gavin Kelly ran into each other, and that just created a whole bunch of traffic in front of Bales, and he's not able to pick up the first down. Yeah, you definitely you got to have clean exchanges, you know, especially in a state championship game. It's going to be huge. Great job by Harvest, really attacking there, and really getting a stop here. If they can get quick points on the board, it'll definitely definitely help them keep the momentum they just built. So out comes Hunter Estill in the. Harvest Christian offense, Bradley Peterson, the running back behind him, and Peterson's going to get the pitch, and he's got a lot of running room on first down and 15. Steps through a tackle, steps through another. He's to the corner, to the end zone. Touchdown, Bradley Peterson, one play, and he's in. Well, that was a quick response there by uh, Harvest Christian. Excellent job blocking and 
And uh, running back did quite a few moves to get himself into the end zone. Excellent, excellent play there to uh, really cap off that great defensive stand by Harvest. Should be a, a interesting to see how New Braunfels Christian responds after this play. Bradley Peterson taking it to the house after a fourth down stop by their defense, a 39-yard touchdown run. Extra point is blocked, so it will remain 6-0 in favor of Harvest Christian. But two minutes and 14 seconds into the football game, Bradley Peterson's got six on a 39-yard touchdown run, and it only took one play for Harvest Christian to find the end zone. And, boy, he made it look easy. He got out there a little bit of space, made some moves, and he was gone. If that's, if that's a sign of things to come for Harvest Christian, they're going to be in great shape. I'm interested to see what Coach Wood does here on offense coming at him and see if he's going to stay with the tight, you know, especially with the wind going against him, or is he going to try to spread it out a little bit, um, you know, kind of the thing. You see it a lot in 11 man with all the spread offenses, you know, trying to get your athletes out in space. And obviously, New Braunfels Christian, no shortage of athletes, obviously, here in the state championship game because of it. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what he goes with. You know, obviously, the win's a, uh, a, win's a concern, you know, and then Harvest shows that they can, they can make some plays. So it'll be interesting to see what Coach does. There's a website that uh, I imagine maybe you guys are familiar with, uh, sixmanfootball.com, that does weekly spreads for uh, six-man high school football games. They missed the mark on the Division Three game rather substantially because they expected uh, Heritage to 45 Weatherford Christian, and that game was never close to that, uh, to that status. In fact, Weatherford had an 18-point uh, lead early on in the third quarter before Heritage came back and won that game. But they listed uh, New Braunfels Christian as a 38-point underdog to uh, Watauga Harvest Christian today. So we'll see, uh, see if they have any more luck with game two of the day, but... Certainly a good start for a heavily favored Harvest Christian team. We'll see if New Braunfels Christian can come up with an answer here on first and 15 from their own 20. Again, the tight formation, and it's Grimsley pitching it back for Bales. This time he's able to get to the corner and pick up about six. Great job there by the fullback. The thing with if you're running the eye formation, it's that fullback has got to pick up that first threat. He's got to pick up that defensive end. If he doesn't, it's going to spell disaster for that running back because, as you could see, Harvest had a good backside contain going on, but if you can get, you know, that frontside block open, it's huge. Wyatt Green, the defensive end, and, and it's worth noting Green and Severance listed as defensive ends. They kind of play a hybrid defensive end linebacker type position for this Harvest Christian defense as Bales gets the handoff once again. But Green was cut down by Kelly on that last play. Here they're able to stick their nose in there a little bit further and get out to the 41 and set up third down and four. Yeah, I think with New Braunfels Christian's offense, you know, they're willing to kind of ground and pound, you know, take four or five yards, you know, set up manageable downs. Uh, the biggest thing for them, which I haven't seen them do yet, is that they've got to do some play action and they've got to do some – you know, some misdirection plays to be able to kind of open it up because if not, uh, Harvest is going to pin their ears back and go after it. Third down and four as we cross over three minutes into the Division II six-man state championship game here in Taps. Hand off to Bales and met immediately by Wyatt Green. Does gain about a yard on the play, but it's going to be fourth down and just about two. Seven straight runs now for this offense. Looking to convert a fourth and is it two? I think so, yeah, about fourth and two. I think the big thing here is if you're near Miles Christian, you have to convert here. You know, with the harvest, you know, with as much excitement they've got going on, you've got to get, got to keep your uh, drive going. Grimsley under center with the straight eye behind him once again. Pitches it back for Bale, straight forward, lowers his shoulder, gets across the 45, first down. And as a coach, that's what you ask your running back. If, you know, it's fourth and three. We need you to get need you to get those yards. He did a great job there lowering his shoulder, getting, you know, probably an extra two or three yards even with that. And so sets up a first and 15 around midfield for him. It should be – they can continue to run and continue to milk this clock. I think that's what's going to help them the most. Some, some schools are uh, better with having stats than others are, especially at the high school level. Um, there weren't uh, – 
easily accessible stats for New Braunfels Christian, but the way that it was described to me by their head coach, uh, Josh Wood said to me, he said, he said, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but Luke Bales has rushed for a lot of yards and he scored a lot of touchdowns this year. He is their offense in a lot of, I mean, in, in, in spades for this football team. And they're, they're who they go. He's who they go to. If they can keep moving these sticks, then that will be a good strategy for them. Keep the running game going. Keep the clock moving. Minimize the amount of time that Harvest Christian is able to possess the ball. And that could lead to a recipe for success for this Wildcat team. They picked up four there on first and 15. So second and 11 as we get close to the midway point of quarter number one. Ball just across midfield for the first time today for New Braunfels Christian. Straight eye once again, and again the pitch goes to Bales, and this time he's got room. Bales across the 25, across the 20, he's in a free space. Touchdown, Luke Bales. That was a sweet move by Bales to get out into the open. Had one man to beat, shook him out of his shoes, and scored the touchdown. Excellent, excellent block, but also excellent move there by Mr. Bales. 39 yards to pay dirt, and Luke Bales ties the football game up at six points apiece. And let's credit number 11, Gavin Kelly, who opened the door for him with that block. Kelly, the fullback, and uh, his head coach, Josh Wood, said he's the most durable kid that he's ever had. He played last year as the extra point is up and through, and New Braunfels Christian takes an early 8-6 lead here just past the midway point of quarter number one, 4.55 on the clock, first quarter. Gavin Kelly last year played with a broken femur. Wood said he, he, he said Gavin didn't realize he had a broken femur. He didn't know he had a broken femur and went out and played anyway. They found out after the fact, but he played with a broken femur, wrestled a little bit, the you know, as the seasons changed into the winter, wrestled a little bit with the broken femur before they finally figured out what was going on. He had surgery back in March. So just think about that turnaround time, too, coming back off of surgery on his femur in March, and he's out here playing in a state championship game in November. Tough, tough kid. 5'9", 170 pounds, playing fullback for this Wildcats football team and opening up holes for Luke Bales as they take an 8-6 lead here midway through the first. That's incredible and absolutely right. He's glad he's back, and so is this NBCA team. So with that, here comes the new Braunfels kickoff squad. Brady Hines, I beg your pardon, Gavin Kelly is their uh, kickoff specialist. And if you're not used to six-man football, onside kicks are rather prevalent, and they're set up for one right here. Has to go 15 yards, not 10, and very quickly jumping on top of it is Jackson Austin. I beg your pardon, Bradley Peterson recovering. Yeah, the... Uh Onside kick is definitely a weapon that six-man coaches like to use. Obviously, with the wind we've got going right now, he's not going to kick it into the end zone. There's no way. Yeah. So, excellent, you know, excellent job there by Coach Wood to try to go for it. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. It's just, just kind of what you got to do. So, that gives the football to Harvest Christian at the 39-yard line on New Braunfels' side of the field. First and 15. And it will be Estel under center. A quick handoff inside for Wyatt Green, the fullback, and he drags a tackler to the 35-yard line. Pick up a four. Harvard's spending most of their time right now on offense in what's called the Jaybird formation. Kind of an offset eye is what some people like to refer to it as well. Sometimes they'll flex out that tight end to kind of make him a receiving threat as well. Second down and 11. Pitch goes to Peterson, trying to get the corner and swallowed up after a pickup of about three. Ethan Hudson there to help drag him to the ground. It'll be third down and we'll call it eight. They've got to get to the 30, uh, the 24-yard line. My math is shaky. We'll say third and nine. Estel in shotgun. Looking on the near side, wide open is Hudson Hayes. Hayes makes one man miss. He's got the first down inside the 15-yard line. 
Man, that was an excellent play drawn up there by Coach Perry over at Harvest. That was uh, that was good. He was wide open, was able to drop it to him. Estel's obviously got a live arm, being a great you know baseball pitcher that he is. But man, he put it right in there and allowed his uh, allowed his receiver to make a play. You mentioned Estel, a pitcher, will be playing his college baseball next year at East Texas Baptist. 21 touchdown passes on the year, not a single interception. And they're looking for more here as the misdirection goes in the hands of Bradley Peterson, trying to get the corner. They string him out pretty well. It's down inside the 10. Brought down by number 15, Brady Hines for NBCA. Harvest lining up in what kind of they call the Cowboys set. It's obviously center and two tight ends on each side. And then uh, quarterback kind of back in the shotgun with a running back on each side as well. Obviously, you can see they can run out of it and then tend to throw to their guys a little bit too. So, so Second down and goal here for Harvest Christian from the nine. 2.30 to play first quarter. is over the middle, wide open touchdown. Hudson Hayes. Hunter Estel had him wide open in the end zone, and back in front goes Harvest Christian. Yeah, Estel's got a, a great arm, is able to hit him. You know, if you got guys that wide open, though, I can see why you haven't thrown an interception. <laughs> I mean, man, that was that was beautiful. Great, you know, sprint out pass for him. Excellent job out of the Jaybird, and way to get back on the board for Harvest Christian. And Estel took a shot by number nine, R.C. Skelton, but hung in there enough to make the delivery, and he'll take that trade off. Now on for the extra point comes Duncan Severance to try and add two, and that one gets blocked once again. 2.26 on the clock, first quarter. It's 12-8, to eight, Harvest Christian in front. It'll be interesting to see how those extra points hold up because mm -hmm. we know in six-man it's worth two points, and so as we kind of talked about in the first game, it, there's been a lot of times where teams will score more touchdowns, but the other team kicks all their extra points and can possibly win the game, so... Um, you know, Coach Meyer's probably going to try to clean that up so we can get those extra two points every time because it, it will make a difference. Yeah, Jason Reimer's the head coach at Emory Wiener, who's the uh, number two seed in, uh, rather than the number two ranked team in Division One, who plays Lake Hill tonight for the Division One state championship, was telling me that, you know, what a difference it made for them in their state semifinal game. They won that game by 10 points entirely on the strength of their two point extra points. He said, we both teams scored the same number of touchdowns. We converted. They didn't. We won the football game by 10. It was just that simple. So it can make a big difference in the football game. And just in these first uh, seven minutes and change, we're seeing that as the lead is only four for Harvest Christian, despite the two touchdowns. Touchback once again on the kickoff there for Duncan Severin. So it'll be NBCA ball at their own 20. First and 15. I've been impressed with these. A lot of the kickers we've seen today, a lot of these kids are able to boot it. And obviously, haven't seen a lot from New Braunfels, Christian, but kicking into the wind once they reverse field will, you know, like to see what they can do. But I've been pretty impressed. A lot of times kicking can be kind of a weakness for a lot of these smaller schools playing six-man, but I, I've been extremely impressed. The wind probably helps a little bit. <laughs> but, Duncan, but Duncan Severin's put a foot into that one, and we saw, to your point, in, in the uh, Division Three game as well. First and 15, and they'll pitch it back to Bales as well. Uh, again, rather, I should say. And the one thing you can see, too, when you run the I formation, a lot of times in six-man, and same with 11-man as well, is the tempo that you run your offense at and, you know, speed and execution of your offensive plays is going to be huge. That play right there, the problem with it was it was slow developing. Mm. You've got to get these run plays off pretty quickly and kind of catch the defense off off uh, balance. You know, that's the one thing with eye formation. It's not the fastest formation ever to run out of. As a result, it's second down and 14 under two minutes to play first quarter. Bales once again, this time had a little bit of a crease, but it closed very quickly. Corbin Fowler there once again, and it'll be third down and 11. As I said, we've got about, you know, third and 10, third and 11 on this um, play. It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I wouldn't guarantee it, but 
pretty good shot that New Braunfels Christian probably going to try to run it, maybe get out on a sweep or a misdirection on a counterplay here. Um, but they need to get some yardage to make a manageable fourth down or get to a first. Third down and 11, and a flag comes in right at the snap as they tried to pitch it back for Bales. Yep, false start. Usually third and 11 becomes third and 16. Yep, usually when it comes from the referee behind the play, you know, usually it's going to be some sort of false start, holding, you know, roughing the passer. A lot of times, you know, if you're watching the game, you see where the flag comes from, probably tell you what kind of penalty it was. Our officials today, Tom Cremens, the crew chief and referee, Greg Hare, the umpire, Carl Tapley, the head linesman, Ellery Watson, your line judge, and Timothy Mast is the back judge. Third down and 16 here for New Braunfels Christian with 30 seconds to play in quarter number one. Bales straight ahead after he gets the toss and not a lot of room gets back to, basically gets those five yards back and it'll be fourth down and 11. An emphatic commitment here by NBCA to try and establish the run even with long yards situations here is that a result of this is their bread and butter or are they concerned about the wind i mean they do throw the football around quite a bit we have not seen Rhett elrod take a snap yet today perhaps that'll change in the second quarter as we end up with a 12-8 first quarter score harvest christian with a four-point edge on new braunfels christian in the taps division two six-man state championship game we'll be back on taps tv right after this I play soccer, basketball, and I run on the track team. Soccer for my high school was a lot more heart. You were playing with your friends, you were playing with your classmates, your coach was from your school as well. You had the name on the front of your jersey that meant something to you on and off the field. It made you much more committed, much more driven. Back at Panther Stadium in Waco, Waco, Midway ISD, the home stadium for the Midway Panthers and for this weekend, the home of the Tamp State Championships. Six-man Division Two, starting quarter number two, 12-8 in favor of the Harvest Christian Saints. New Braunfels with fourth down and 10. New Braunfels out in the spread now, trying to throw it with the wind at their back. First time we've seen them in this formation yet. Yeah, that's Rhett Elrod taking the snap, trying to dance out of pressure. Ball's loose. Ball's on the deck and picked up by New Braunfels Christian. Can they advance it? Yes, indeed. Close to a first down. Does he have it? Yes, he does. First down Wildcats scooping up the loose ball and finding the first down marker. Just the way they drew it up. There's the replay. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> That is Luke Bales who scooped up the football. The officials still discussing after this play. I know in 11-man football on fourth down, if there's a fumble, you can't advance it. It is different in six-man football, but I think they're still discussing kind of the finer points of that rule right now. I wonder if they're also just, I mean, I don't, didn't look like a pass to me. It looked like it was very clearly the ball was knocked out of the quarterback's hands. Correct. Yeah, and usually... Usually a lot of times with a fumble and advancing it, it's, you know, as long as they don't get positive yards. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, it's obviously, oh, you know, I can't get the first down. I'll act like I'm going to fumble it or something. But that obviously wasn't, you know, New Braunfels Christian's idea on that one. Right, that was just exactly. a great, great defensive play there by the, um, the Saints. Just, you know, sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce away sometimes, unfortunately. They signal Harvest Christian football. There was no other signal from Tom Cremens, the referee and crew chief today, other than first down Harvest Christian. That is a surprise. That absolutely looked like a forced fumble. Contact was made by the defense. And now the uh, coaching staff getting an explanation.
I'm as perplexed as anybody sitting at home watching right now as to why that ruling was made. There was no explanation given by the officials. Quite literally, the only thing Tom Cremans did was point toward the, uh, you know, in, in Harvest Christian's direction. That was all he did. And now here goes Bradley Peterson in that direction and in one play yet again, touchdown. Late Saints. flag. Flag did come in, yeah. Lane sits back at the, uh, well, they're picking it up now and moving it forward to the 12-yard line. I think it's going to be probably some sort of illegal block by the Saints. Let's see if we get more of an explanation about this play from Tom Cremans than we did about the last one. And it is a chop block against Harvest Christian. So take the touchdown off the board. And they'll set the ball back at the 27-yard line. And it'll be first down once again. But first and looks to be about 22. Yeah, chop blocks is, you all probably remember, chop blocks is when somebody's engaged up high and then somebody else goes down low. Obviously a you know, a serious thing for the defender because they obviously can't defend themselves. So, um, you know, good call there by the referees. Wanted to keep the game safe and see what Harvest does to uh, rebound after that call. So first and 22 now from the 27. Once again, the pitch goes to Peterson, and this time they're able to string him out much better and take him down right at the line of scrimmage. That was Drew Campbell all over it for the Wildcats. Got to the backfield in a hurry. Yeah, a lot of times in six-man, it's try to get to that corner and go, try to catch the edge. But as you can see right now, especially with that New Braunfels Christian defense, they're trying to make him move horizontally rather than vertically. If you can get vertical and get upfield, that's huge. But make them go side to side rather than forward, it can definitely help your defense. Officially, it'll go down as a loss of two, and it's second and 24 a minute into quarter number two. Harvest Christian leading by four, trying to add to it. But so far on this drive, they've only gone backward. They're going to go to the air now. Estill oh, looking open. deep downfield, open near the end zone, complete, makes one man miss, touchdown. Duncan Severance, his first touchdown of the day, and Harvest opens up a 10-point lead. That was an excellent play there, crossing routes by the tight ends to open up that play. Duncan Severance able to shake the man on him and score the touchdown. That's... You know, you draw them up, sometimes it happens that way. Sometimes it, you know, works out in a different way. But that that's what you want right there, especially, you know, with New Braunfels Christian playing that man-to-man -man defense. Harvest Christian looking to add two more here. Up and through, and it's 20 to 8 in favor of Harvest Christian after a 29 yard touchdown pass from Hunter Estill to Duncan Severance. And they've opened up a 12 point lead. And good thing there for the Saints, they were able to make that extra point, which is huge. So that gives them two touchdown, almost a two touchdown lead. So good for them. We'll see what they can do. Um, you know, Harvest has been able to kind of answer most of the hits, most of the punches that New Braunfels Christian has thrown so far. So we'll see what the Wildcats can do. They need to get a score on the board here, at least take some time off the clock so they don't give this Harvest, potent Harvest offense uh, the ball back. Harvest Christian getting set to kick the football away. It'll be Severance once again. Now they're kicking into the wind, so you wonder if they go the same direction New Braunfels did and Try the onside kick. Hunter Estill will be the kicker sometimes when they try and do the onside. This is a team that does not punt, so for them to try the onside kick wouldn't be a surprise, but this time they do kick it away, and from his own end zone, here comes New Braunfels Christian, making a man miss and getting out across the 20-yard line. I think for Coach Myers, that's um, that's probably about what you want right there because even if you kick it into the end zone for a touchback, you're going to get it about to the 20. So uh, good um, good coverage there by the kickoff team, which 
as we said, it's going to be interesting to watch here with the Saints of Harvest Christian. They play only about eight or nine guys on their squad most of the time, so we're going to see how that, um, you know, how that wearing down and how that, uh, you know, lack of depth, I would say, um, could possibly hurt them in the second half. Yeah, Perry Meyer said it. He's, he plays, you know, those same six or seven kids, offense, defense, and even on special teams. Made the comparison to... Uh, is on first and 15. It's Bales once again picking up about five. Made the made the comparison to Alabama head coach Nick Saban. Said, hey, if, if he's going to play all his studs on special teams, uh, I'm going to do the same thing. And very realistically, they play the same six, seven, maybe eight kids all game long. Over the course of the season, they haven't had to play many four-quarter games. Yeah, I don't think they've played a... I think they went into third quarter last week against Allen Academy, but they haven't played a whole lot of ball games. They literally only one game have they been forced to go all four quarters. That was against Abilene Christian in the final week of the regular season. Every single other game they have won via the mercy rule, including in the playoffs. So it is certainly one of the goals of New Braunfels Christian to force them to play a full four-quarter football game, and they feel like that could work in their favor as the game gets deeper and deeper in. And on this drive, still committing to the run early on and seeing some more results than they have in the last couple of drives. Back-to-back -back run sets up third down in about three. Have to get to the 47, uh, rather the 36-yard line. Bales takes the handoff, falls his way forward very close to the sticks. I think they're going to mark that one short. Looks probably to be, you know, fourth and one, fourth and six inches, something say, like yeah, that. Fourth and maybe a foot, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be, I think, uh, I think Coach Wood will probably run the ball here because he knows he can probably get a good uh, Good couple yards there from his After all back. that, they signal first down. Tom Cremens apparently has a better angle than you and I do. <laughs> I guess my eyes aren't as good as they once were, so we'll see. But it was excellent, excellent play there to get those extra yards. So we'll see if uh, see if they continue to run it. You know, you got to say they got to pass sooner or later, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We are far too young for our eyes to be getting old, my <laughs> man. That is... Too early. 6.40 on the clock, second quarter, first and, ten, first and 15 for New Braunfels Christian. And once again, it's Luke Bales. And I one, think you could count on one hand the number of times I haven't said it's Luke Bales for New Braunfels Christian so far today. Absolutely. I think the, the thing to watch, too, with this uh, New Braunfels Christian team, obviously, you know, they've got quite a bit of depth on their sidelines. And obviously, Harvest only plays, you know, seven, eight guys at the most. I think the, one of the reasons Coach Wood is probably running this tight formation a lot is to trying to wear down that Harvest Christian team because you got guys going both ways and special teams and not playing a whole lot of ball games. It may tire them out. Second down and 10 after Bale's picked up five, and he'll get the pitch once again, lowers his shoulder, gets down to the 35. Give him four on the play. It'll be third and six. But yeah, just for comparison's sake, we talk about Harvest Christian only playing six, seven, maybe eight guys all game long. New Braunfels will run 12 to 13 different guys out there just on the offensive side of the ball. We haven't seen much of that variety yet. They've done much of their work so far out of their tight formation. But they do have quite a few more bodies than, than Harvest Christian does, or at least they certainly play more, more bodies than Harvest Christian does. For sure. I think the thing um, that will bode well for New Orleans Christian later in the game is their guys aren't going to be as tired. So, I mean, obviously, um, you know, with Harvest, you know, they're going to play their best guys. And obviously, the, you know, those top six or seven are going to be the guys that are going to play most of the game. But, you know, if your six are better than that six, it's going to hold out pretty well for the most part. The only thing is, you know, you're getting too long you know, either high-scoring game or long, drawn-out, you know, knockout game, you know, it, it could play not in your favor. So it would be interesting to see, you know, don't see we'll, 
or don't think we'll see it too much right now, um, you know, as, as they take the timeout, but I think we'll see it a lot more definitely later into third and into the fourth. Mm -hmm. 5.08 on the clock here, second quarter, 20 to 8, the score in favor of Harvest Christian in the TAP six man Division II state championship game. Mike Leslie, Matt Tarbutton, and Gabe Duarte here with you. Matt Tarbutton, the head coach and athletic director at San Jacinto. Gabe Duarte, the principal at St. Peter's. Good enough to be with us today on the TAPS TV broadcast of the state championship games. Three six man games today. We've already got the Division three game in the books. Heritage with a win over Weatherford Christian, 46-26. This game here was originally scheduled for a 3 o'clock kick, pushed back to 3.30, and then a 7 o'clock kick tonight in the Division I championship, Lake Hill and Emory Wiener. Bales looked like he was trying to maybe consider throwing the football there, lowered his shoulder and picked up a yard or two, and it'll be fourth down and, say, about five. Yeah, you always got to watch out for the um, watch out for the trick play. In six man, you know, especially running back pass or, um, you know, reverse somewhere. Uh, Coach Coach Myers, I don't think, was too excited about something on the other side of the field. I don't know if it was a call or something like that. New Brunswick's trying to spread it out now. They do go spread on fourth down and five. That's Rhett Elrod in the ball game for the second time today. He's been put in a couple of tough spots. Uh, Two fourth downs are the only times he's come on the field in this spread formation to try and make something happen. We'll see if they can have more success this time than they did last time. Fourth down and five. Pressure in his face immediately. Lost it on the near side. Complete first down and an awful lot of running room for Luke Bales. Bales to the corner. Touchdown. What a great play. There were four players who subbed in for that formation. Yeah, that was excellent, definitely play, or sorry, excellent play there by the quarterback. Stared down the gun barrel from that defender, chunked it to his running back, kind of a safety valve in that offense. Uh, you know, the interesting part of that is, you know, in, in six-man football, there's got to be a second exchange for that quarterback to run. It was a direct snap, so he had to throw the ball, and he did it well. LaVarrett Elrod, number four, the senior with the pass for NBCA. Oh, extra point goes off the left goal post and does not ricochet through, so it'll stay 20-14. to 14. Yeah, Red Elrod, a 6'4", 200-pound senior. First team all-district quarterback, certainly the throwing quarterback of the two for NBCA. His head coach, Josh Wood, said that he's had some minor bouts with inconsistency during the course of the year, but he said when Red is on... He's on, and we saw a little bit of that right there. Big touchdown pass on fourth down and five, and NBCA's crept back within a score. New Braunfels Christian has been successful in both sets of offenses, so we'll see what they do next time they get the ball. I mean, obviously having the depth that they have and having the um, talent that they have, you know, at running back and also at quarterback and wide receiver, they can go either way, so it's definitely something that, you know, I wouldn't say they do anything tricky on offense and something that you have to spend a whole lot of time preparing for, but you've just got to be able to, you know, beat them straight up and, and be able to, you know, outrun them and, and cover them. So and that's, that's a tough task for anybody to, to do. So here comes Gavin Kelly appearing to line up for the onside kick once again. Again, it's got to go 15 yards. Bounding near the sideline and out of bounds, and Duncan Severance lets it go. Looks like Coach Myers will put the offense out on the field. Obviously, after a kick goes out of bounds, you've got two options. You can obviously take it, you know, five yards from where it went out of bounds, or you can have them re-kick. I like to have teams re-kick. I always tell my boys, it's like, well, I'm going to have them re-kick until they're in their own end zone. So, um, <laughs> you know, just would like to get the ball and moan on my returner's hands if I can. But, you know, everybody's different. So They'll take it right at midfield, first and 15. 4.06 to play second quarter, and they'll toss it back to Wyatt Green coming around the left side, gets the corner and lowers his shoulder and picks up about half of it on first down.
Harvest coming out running multiple offenses against New Braunfels Christian. Definitely trying to, you know, find the edge running, trying to pass it over the top. They've done a great job so far. Biggest thing is they just can't make any mistakes, which they've been pretty good with the exception of, you know, one or two penalties that they've gotten. They've done pretty well so far. Second down and seven, some movement before the snap, and flags fly in. That was the right-hand side of the line. I think it may have been Wyatt Green, either Green or Hudson Hayes. False start against Harvest will knock them back, and they'll be second down and longer, second down and about 13 now. Do want to give a shout out to the Midway ISD AV program and Caleb Overstreet calling up all our shots over the course of today that you're watching here on TAPS TV. Doing a great job bringing you the action here from Panther Stadium in Waco. Three minutes even on the clock, second quarter, second down and 13, and they pitch it back for Bradley Peterson. Peterson makes one cut, gets close to the first down marker, lowers his shoulder, and he's passed it. Out of bounds inside the 25, and it'll be a fresh set of downs for the Saints. Peterson broke one tackle, then was wrapped up by two defenders and pushed for a little more. He's a load. Yeah, he, he did a great job there getting the extra yardage. Thought he was going to go down before the sticks, but, man, he he really was able to, you know, muscle through it and go. Got a kick out of it when I was talking with Perry Myers, their head coach, earlier this week, and he was telling me about Bradley Peterson. And the way that he said it was was to really emphasize each syllable. He said he is a physical runner. And we saw a little bit of it right there as he picked up the first down on second and long. Now we get the handoff once again, trapped in the backfield, but he breaks loose, flag flies, gets his way back to the line of scrimmage, maybe just a hair beyond, but it looks like a flag is going to bring it all back. Yeah, I think they're going to call a, a holding there on the offense. Pulling guard was able to manhandle their uh, defensive lineman there. I don't think the officials thought it was uh, a legal block, and so they're going to bring it back, which, you know, two uh, – Two penalties on successive plays. Coach Myers probably is not too happy about that. Turns it into a first down and call it an even 25, I think. Ball sits at the 32-yard line, and they've got to get all the way to the seven or eight. Call it the eight, so we'll say first and 24. They'll line up in a tight formation and look to throw the ball downfield, but nowhere to go for Hunter Estill. Well played by the NBCA defense. Number 33, Drew Campbell, was all over the quarterback. In his face immediately. Yeah, that's, that's the one drawback on that play, you know, being a sprint out or, um, you know, kind of run out pass right there. Going to the short side of the field, that's – you got to get that pass off quick, and New Braunfels Christian did a great job of obviously getting pressure on him and also doing a great job on the backside for coverage. So second in a mile. 2.19 on the clock, second quarter. Hunter S. still looking to the sideline, getting the play call. Offensive coordinator Josh Huckabee trying to figure out what to do here on second down and forever. And they'll call timeout, their first timeout of the half to talk this over a little further. Harvest Christian, an offense averaging 59.2 points per game. They feel confident in their ability, guys, to be able to do just about anything. Run it out of tight, run it out of spread, throw it deep, throw it short. They feel like they've got a very balanced offense, and as a result, that makes it hard for defenses to slow down what they can do. We've seen some of that, certainly, over the course of this first uh, two quarters of play, but NBCA's done a nice job of at least making it a little harder on them than, than maybe what they're used to. For sure. I think the big thing, and as we saw, that's kind of stalled out this drive. I know it's only only second down, but it's, you know, second in a country mile, and so, you know, these guys are going to have to, um, you know, kind of clean it up a little bit because in a game like this with, you know, two high-powered offenses, you can't make those simple mistakes. You can't take one step forward and two steps back. 
They took one step forward with a nice run by Bradley Peterson to pick up the first down a couple plays ago, but a couple of big steps back here, penalties, and a not especially well-executed play on first down and 25, sets up second down and forever. Estill looking deep, has a man, tipped. Did he catch that? Did he get a foot in bounds? The line judge says no, he did not. Back judge confirms no catch. That was very close for Duncan Severance. Number 15, Brady Hines in on the coverage. Help just get that a look at bit. this. I thought he may have gotten a foot in bounds. I mean, it's not, uh, not a reviewable situation, but good coverage. Uh, that, that angle doesn't give you a, a peek at his feet, but. Great effort, though, by Severance. That was, you know, even though it was called incomplete, if, you know, you get another chance in the game and a play like that, it, mm -hmm. uh, he's going to come up with it. Of the 21 touchdown passes that Hunter Estill has thrown this year, 20 of them have been caught by Duncan Severance. Bradley Peterson's got 25 touchdown runs of his own this year. That one won't go for six. It'll go for uh, maybe six yards, and it'll set up fourth down and call it 18. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Coach Myers calls here. You know, Coach Huckabee is calling the plays for him. Be interested to see what they do, try to spread it out. Looks like that's what they're going to plan to do. It's, you know, you got to score here, but you got – a little bit of a margin for error as well. Have to get to the eight-yard line. They set up Estel with a run-pass option. He rolls to the left-hand side, looking deep downfield. Fires toward the end zone, incomplete. NBCA with a big stop on fourth down and 18. Huge play there for the Wildcats, able to get Hunter Estel some pressure and able to uh, stay good coverage in the back. You know, had the two. Receivers blanketed back there, and so, you know, definitely definitely helped the Wildcats in their favor for sure because, you know, kind of talked about earlier, you know, started the game. Mistakes are going to be big, especially these two teams that, you know, look pretty evenly matched so far. So now with 126 to play here in the second quarter, NBCA's got two timeouts to work with. And they sit 54 yards away from the end zone. Spread formations out there, and Rhett Elrod, the quarterback, but they're going to call one of those two timeouts before they even snap the football and talk things over a little further. Yeah, New Braunfels Christian trying to, trying to look like Texas Tech out there, trying to throw it all over the yard. We'll see if they come out and stay in the spread formation. I think most of their bigger guys are staying on the sidelines, so I think they're going to stay in their spread. I think the biggest thing is as long as they can complete some passes, get the ball moving, you know, they've got a minute 26, so, you know, they don't have to hurry down the field, but they definitely got to definitely gotta use this time because Harvest will get the ball back in the second half. Yeah, Harvest Christian won the opening coin toss and deferred, so they do have first licks at it in the second half. Leading 20 to 14 as it stands right now. NBCA would love to erase that lead with a touchdown here late in the half. Spread formation for Elrod. Looks to the near side. Elrod has to throw it, gets it off, completes it. Dragged down on the right-hand side is Brady Hines, big 6'4", 198-pound wide receiver. One oh seven and moving second quarter. Give him five on the play. It'll be second down and ten. Good job there by the Harvest defense to get him down before he can get out of bounds. Now tick down to 57 seconds left as Elrod and company look to the near side for the play once again. 51 seconds and moving. Lots of time going off the clock here between plays. Yeah, New Braunfels Christian not doing a great job getting these play calls in quickly. They're definitely wasting 41 seconds on the clock when they finally do snap it. Elrod's got a man open, though, on the near side, complete for Mason Lemmy. Lemmy trying to make a man miss, running to the far sideline. Picks up a block. He's inside the 10. Lemmy lowers his uh -oh. shoulder. Ball came loose at the end of the play. Did it go through the end zone? No, they say it went out of bounds at the one-yard line. And with 27 seconds left in the half, NBCA has first and goal at the one. Well, I think that's definitely what you want with that play right there you were able to 
get it to a wide open Mason Lemmy, allow him to make a move and almost get the touchdown. That's that's the way you, you playing it on in practice. Doesn't always go that way, but good job there from the, the Wildcats. I think they were benefit. Uh, they were the uh, beneficiaries of a favorable call there too as to whether or not that ball went through the back of the end zone. Into the end zone for the touchdown goes Luke Bales. Tie game. Smart play there by uh, Coach Wood to, you know, kind of use tempo there, get the extra point, or sorry, not the extra point, but get the touchdown real quick. You know, obviously there's not a review or a replay to watch, but, you know, you've got the defense on the heels. Might as well just continue to roll. So Bales runs it in, ties the football game up at 20 points apiece, and they'll come out for the extra point now and try and add two more. And they do exactly that, 22 to 20. New Braunfels Christian Academy with the lead late in the second quarter. This is not a position Harvest Christian is accustomed to. No, they are not. They are used to being able to dominate opponents pretty quickly. You know, they've 45 to all but one of their opponents this year, so it's kind of new territory from them. Let's see how... Uh, the mental toughness, and I know Coach Myers, um, you know, instills that into his kids. But, you know, biggest thing in a stage like this, it, it, it's different for sure. But, you know, we'll see if his guys can dig deep, especially, you know, only the seven or eight guys that he, he does play, um, you know, see how they can dig deep and, and really kind of respawn because this is probably something they haven't seen quite a bit. 22 to 20, NBCA with a two-point lead late second quarter. Back-to-back -back touchdowns by Luke Bales. He's got all three on the day for New Braunfels Christian Academy. A 36-yard receiving score from Rhett Elrod on, the Elrod on that fourth down. And then a one-yard touchdown run just a moment ago to pay off the big pass from Elrod to Mason Lemmy. They'll line up for the onside kick, but then kick it deep. 24 seconds on the clock as they finally make contact with the football. It's Duncan Severance, and he's bottled up inside the 10, makes one man miss, but can't get free again. 16 seconds here, second quarter. And they're pinned deep in their own territory. We'll see whether or not Harvest tries to do anything with it here. I think that was good strategy there by Coach Wood to, you know, kind of pooch kick it over him because they had nobody back deep. And so they made Severance go back there, kind of, you know, four on one, three on one against the coverage team. So great, great way to draw it up there. You know, a lot of times when you're trying to, you know, do the onside recovery, you hope your guys can get to it if they do something like that. But they caught a harvest in a bind there for sure. 16 seconds here, second quarter. That's still under center in a tight formation. Doesn't look like they're going to try and do anything too crazy here with the final seconds of the second, of the, uh, second frame here. Down to 10 as Peterson runs out of bounds. Picks up about five. And again, Harvest Christian does have the football to start the third quarter. Wouldn't be surprised to maybe see a trick play here, you know, running back mm -hmm. pass or, or something, maybe a reverse, you know, reverse pass, something to try to, you know, get New Braunfels Christian kind of caught in a pickle here, but I don't know. We'll just have to see. Sixty-six yards away from the end zone, Peterson looking back on the near side. He's got a man. It's Severance. He caught it, knocked out of bounds. Three seconds on the clock. They're going to mark him at the twenty-eight-yard line. That was a beautiful throw by Estel, running the opposite way, but able to hit his man on the backside. He's got a strong arm, and he showed it there for sure. I like the play design, too. The, everything about the flow was going to the left, try and draw the defense's attention to that side, and then leave Duncan Severance open on the backside of the play. That gets him down inside the 30. 28-yard line, three seconds left on the clock. And it looks like they'll call timeout and discuss what they want to do with these final three seconds. That's their second timeout of the half. 
And if you're NBCA, so much has gone right for you so far. And that one play, now all of a sudden, you've got Harvest with a potential scoring threat with all their weapons. It could happen in those three seconds. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Harvest kind of come out in a little bit of a prevent, or not Harvest, excuse me, New Braunfels Christian come out in a prevent defense to, you know, just kind of keep everything in front of them. Um, you know, doesn't know what Harvest is going to come out with in a spread or a tight. You know, obviously they're able to throw and run out of both. Um, so we'll see what they have to do. Obviously Estel's got the arm to get it there. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, Coach Huckabee, their offensive coordinator, dials up in this play because obviously got a chance to get some points on the board. And even if you don't, you still get the ball back. So it's just kind of an added bonus if you can convert. Would certainly be a uh, momentum shift if they were able to find points here in this final three seconds of the half. After NBCA has scored 14 straight to take the lead by two. Harvest trying to steal it back before halftime. Estill, two men in the rush, gets loose, fires it into the end zone, into double coverage, tipped several times and knocked away, incomplete. And that is how half number one comes to an end. Corbin Fowler standing in the middle of the field trying to signal the officials that there should have been some sort of flag on the final play. No flag flies. And NBCA with a... Bit of a surprise, a two-point lead for the Wildcats at halftime here in the Division II championship game. What do you guys think of what we've seen thus far? It's been a, like you said, a little bit of a surprise, a great first half of football. Uh, you know, I don't think we saw this coming. Obviously, Harvest has some real threats, some real weapons on offense. Uh, but so far, NBCA has found a recipe that works. Use the clock as much as possible, and, and when they've had to take opportunities with the pass, they've done so successfully. So credit to their, their scheme. It's got them with a two-point lead. The Harvest Christian cheerleaders are down on the field now at midfield, so we'll let you guys enjoy their show, and we'll come back with a little analysis of half number one in just a little bit.
Sophomore, Keely Mabrito. Junior, Mayri Kovacaria. And freshman, Nadia Newman, coach of the Minneapolis Christian Morrison Street Squad.
Back at Midway ISD's Panther Stadium, Mike Leslie, Matt Tarbutton, and Gabe Duarte here with you for the six-man Division II state championship in the Texas Association of Private and Parochial Schools. Two teams with uh, differing styles for sure. Harvest Christian with a 20-spot uh, on the board through one half of play, playing with pretty much just six or seven guys on the field, offense, defense, and special teams. New Braunfels Christian Academy with a two-point lead, 22-20 playing quite a few more players, 12, 13, 14 kids getting on the field with regularity, and that's just on the offensive side of the ball. But 22 to 20 is where things stand so far. Harvest Christian started the scoring. Bradley Peterson with a 39-yard touchdown run on the very first offensive play of the game for Harvest Christian to take a 6-0 lead. New Braunfels answered back Luke Bales with a 39-yard touchdown run of his own, 4.55 left in the first quarter, and the two-point PAT made it 8-6 at that point. Harvest Christian answered back with back-to-back -back touchdown passes by Hunter Estill, hit Hudson Hayes for a nine-yard touchdown pass, Duncan Severance for 29 yards, and they led 20-8 after those two scores. The New Braunfels Christian is answered in kind. Two touchdowns of their own. Rhett Elrod to Luke Bales for a 36-yard touchdown pass on fourth down with 4.06 left in the second quarter, and then Bales with a one-yard touchdown run with just 24 seconds left in the first half to take that 22 to 20 lead after the two point PAT was up and through. And that is how we are where we stand right now at halftime of the TAP six man division two state championship game. Harvest Christian going for a 14 and 0 perfect season in a state title. New Braunfels Christian 11 and one on the year and looking to uh, slay the dragon here in the, state in the state title game. Gabe Duarte, we've seen a uh, pretty impressive performance so far from New Braunfels and, and what they've done to keep Harvest Christian at bay to a certain extent on the offensive side of the ball, but more than anything, take advantage of their opportunities offensively to put 22 on the board through one half. Yes, absolutely, and they started with an attack of run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and that served two purposes. One, uh, see if they can tire out this Harvest team, which has, as we've mentioned, uh, they, they don't play a lot of players, so over the course of the game, that may take its toll, and you can imagine NBCA is hoping on wearing them down a little bit, see if they can run even more here in the second half, and at the same time, it also helps them control the clock. Uh, so that will certainly work to their favor. It's no secret that Harvest Christian has a lot of weapons on offense, so anything you can do to limit their amount of possessions and keep them off the board uh, is obviously going to help this Wildcat team to try and maintain this lead and bring home a state championship and, and surprise uh, at least most of the people in this crowd and certainly the people over at sixmanfootball.com. 22 to 20 our score right now still about eight minutes to go before the second half gets underway and Gabe you did a couple of uh, interviews pregame with some dignitaries from each school let's take a listen to those now Duarte here with taps TV and radio we are on the sidelines just before kickoff we've got a special guest here from Harvest Christian introduce yourself for our audience please yes sir, sir. I'm Terry K Wood I'm headmaster at Harvest Christian Academy I'm thrilled to have served this school for 12 years and we're excited to be here today. This is our second time under Coach Myers to make it to the state championship game. And today we want to go away with a win because these young men play with character. That's excellent. Can you tell us a little bit about the school? Yes, sir. We're in our 26th year of Kingdom Education serving the North Fort Worth area there in Tarrant County. So we're thrilled that our parents and students have made their way down to support the team. And what's it like to be here for you guys today? It's a thrill. This is our first undefeated season. So we come into today 13-0 with maybe the best team we've ever had. Uh, so we're hoping for a great outcome today. That's terrific. Best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. Sure. Back to you. Football fans, Gabe Duarte here on TAPS TV and radio with you. We're on the sidelines just before kickoff here. We've got a special guest here from NBCA. Why don't you introduce yourself for our audience? Hey, y'all. I'm Nanette Bartum. Um, I'm Director of Operations at New Orleans yep. Christian Academy. And we are so blessed to be here. We're proud of our boys, proud of Coach Wood. And we just hope that um, yeah. God is glorified today. Tell us what it's like for you and your fans to be here with us. So we are so excited. That, um, we came a few years ago, and we're so blessed to be back. And we um, just hope that God is glorified in the game today. Excellent. Best of luck to you. All right. Thank you. Go Wildcats.
Aiden loves playing baseball. He's in his element when he picks up a baseball bat. When Aiden tore his ACL last year, we were all devastated. We didn't think that a 13-year-old could have a problem such as that. Children's Health Andrews Institute for Orthopedic and Sports Medicine not only repaired Aiden's ACL, but they gave him the knowledge and skills to prevent any future injuries. Now, less than a year later, he's back to hitting homers and doing phenomenal. Twenty-two twenty, the score in favor of New Braunfels Christian Academy at halftime of the Taps Division II six-man state championship game. They lead Harvest Christian by a deuce after a late touchdown by Luke Bales with 24 seconds left to play in quarter number two. Mike Leslie, Matt Tarbutton, and Gabe Duarte back with you here in the booth. And Matt, your thoughts on uh, a rather interesting first half of play, maybe a little surprising first half of play. Well, as we kind of stated in pregame, I think... Um, team that makes the least mistakes is probably going to have a good chance to win this ball game. We saw that in the first half. Both teams were kind of, you know, trading punch for punch there. And then, um, you know, Harvest got a couple penalties and installed one of their drives. Um, obviously, we see the uh, see the depth of New Braunfels Christian definitely helping them. Uh, Coach Myers over at Harvest only plays about seven or eight of his guys on his 15-man team. Obviously, most of them are seniors and juniors. And so, um, you know, we'll see here in the second half how uh, – how well that that durability and how well that um, conditioning takes up because it's going to be huge because, you know, down two, I was going to get the ball back, but down two and 20 minutes left to go, they're going to have to really dig deep to, uh, you know, get some stops and, and get a couple scores to get up on New Braunfels Christian. Now we saw in the first half, guys, the uh, excuse me, in the first game rather today, a heavily favored team down at the halftime break and they were able to kind of, dig down, find that medal that they needed, and, and came out and played very well in the second half. Did uh, did Heritage in the first game, uh, Fredericksburg Heritage in the first game uh, to come back for a 46-26 win. We'll see if Harvest Christian can match that and come back for a win here in the Division II state championship game. We're about uh, 90 seconds away from the opening kick of half number two. As you mentioned, Harvest Christian won the toss and deferred before the game, so they will get the ball to start half number two, which means Hunter Estel, Bradley Peterson, and the Saints offense, Duncan Severance, who we've seen score a touchdown today as well. They will be out on the field first, barring, of course, an onside kick from New Braunfels Christian, which we have seen them line up to kick onside kicks each time that they've scored today. They'll be kicking into the wind here, so we'll see whether or not uh, that impacts their decision-making process as we start half number two. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised when Ron's Fools Christian tries to come out here and, and do the onside. I mean, it would be huge for them because I think they could take that momentum they went into halftime with and, uh, you know, make some, uh, make some noise here. But, um, you know, obviously six-man teams are well prepared for the onside, so we'll see what. See what the Saints from Harvest do on this one. Gavin Kelly, the kickoff specialist for New Braunfels Christian. We've seen him onside several times today. Again, it's got to go 15 yards, so it's got to get to the 35-yard line on Harvest Christian's side of the field. Harvest Christian has been up to the task each time. One time it went out of bounds. We'll see if they can have any more success this time. This one's not going to get... Anywhere close to the requisite 15 yards. Falls dead at the 38 on the New Braunfels side of the field. And Harvest Christian will take the football. Harvest spends most of their time on offense, kind of in that uh, Jaybird offense, or try to spread it out a little bit too. We'll see what uh, Coach Huckabee, their offensive coordinator, calls on this one. Looks like they're going to line up in that tight Jaybird formation and, and get some running yards out of it. First and 15 from the 38 on New Braunfels' side of the field. Estill under center, quick handoff up the middle for Wyatt Green. Breaks a tackle, he's into the clear. Being dragged down from behind, finally inside the 15 is Wyatt Green. Leads the team this season with 26 rushing touchdowns, but slow to get up here and hobbling his way toward the Harvest Christian sideline. 
Brady Hines finally caught up with him with a little help from R.C. Skelton. They were able to bring him down, but not until after a great run there. Green with a little bit less of a gimp as he jogs to the sideline, but he will step off for this play. Bradley Peterson set deep behind Hunter Estill here on first and goal from the 11. Peterson getting signals from the sidelines from Josh Huckabee, the offensive coordinator. It's actually Huckabee's birthday today. Trying to celebrate with a state title. That's not going to help. Peterson slung down in the backfield. Very well played by the defensive front from NBCA. EJ Easterly all over that one. Number eight for the Wildcats. Right on time. Yeah. Easterly's the kind of kid that... Uh, Josh Wood said he can just decide sometimes. I'm not going to be blocked on this play. He's just that strong, that quick, that uh, agile at that defensive end spot and showed a little bit of it right there. Second and goal now from the 16. Estill looking to deep to throw into the end zone. Well covered, but a flag a little bit early with the contact. And Corbin Fowler draws the penalty. Yeah, that was, that was a little too well covered uh, for Mr. <laughs> Fowler. So he's going to... He's going to get the flag, which, you know, is not going to be great for New Braunfels Christian because that's obviously going to give them, give a Harps first down, you know, with it being about, let's see where we were at, 15-yard line. That might put them right at the, uh, right in front of the goal line. So that is not good at all for, for if you're a New Braunfels Christian fan. So um, we'll see if Harvest can capitalize. Yeah, that play was very well covered right up until the defender ran right through the uh, wide receiver. And as a result, it is first and goal once again, this time with the ball sitting on the two-yard line. A back to either side of Hunter Estill. It's Bradley Peterson and Wyatt Green back on the football field and now whistles on the near sideline. And a discussion with Josh Wood, the head coach from New Braunfels. Yeah, he was not too happy with that. I think, I think he probably thought it should have been. And I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I think probably what he's thinking, you know, with the penalty, obviously, uh, you know, pass interference is a, you know, 15 yard penalty, and they weren't 15 yards. You know, they were probably at about the 18. So then, you know, obviously, got to move 15 yards. It's not going to be halfway or half the distance of the goal because it's not within 15. So. Um, not sure if he was frustrated about that or something else, but um, we'll see what they do. Now a timeout called by New Braunfels Christian Academy. Just a minute and 17 seconds in here to quarter number three. And Matt, help me out with this one here because I, from the way that I understand that at least in the 11-man game is it's if you are within, I guess, double – the penalty distance so for a 15 yard penalty if you are inside the 29 for lack of a better way to say it it would be half the distance to the goal line so wouldn't I, at least in the 11 man game the way I understand it is if the ball was at the 17 18 yard line wherever it was prior to that play then it would be half the distance to the goal and the ball the ball should sit on the eight maybe nine yard line um is that a – I didn't realize – if that is a difference in the six-man game, it's news to me. I didn't realize that that was the case, but I, I would have thought it would have been half the distance to the goal as well. Yeah, well, a lot of the time I think it's it's more often called this way than the other way around. Um, I don't think you're wrong if they would have called it, you know, half the distance to the goal there. It's obviously, you know, the officials are in charge, and, you know, they're going to call it the, the way they see it. So you just kind of have to roll with it, and, you know, it's – Unfortunate for New Braunfels, but, you know, I know they're going to try their darners to get a stop here. They don't change anything. It's first and goal from the two, and the handoff goes to Wyatt Green up over top and into the end zone. Touchdown number 27 on the year for Wyatt Green to lead the way for the Saints offense, and he puts him back in front, 26-22. Yeah, I think he's feeling pretty good now because he jumped that guy at the goal line and came down on two of them. Yeah, I think he's feeling all right now. Wyatt Green in from two yards out, and they'll bring out Duncan Severance to try and add two more. And he does exactly that. 28-22, Harvest in front. 
So a good start there from the Harvest Christian Saints offense, able to put some points on the board, able to get a six-point lead here. Um, be interested to see what Coach Wood does here on offense. He spent, I would say, 75% of the time in the first quarter in kind of their tight I-formation offense. And um, thought he did pretty well in it. You know, was able to get one touchdown, uh, touchdown rush by the running back. But, um, you know, they played – their, their spread, kind of their three wide formation in uh, you know the first quarter and first half, excuse me, and we're able to get some points out of it. You know, we have actually scored two touchdowns instead of the one that he scored um, out of the tight formation. So I'll be interested to see what he does. Got I gotta one. say, I'm still puzzled by the by the pass interference call that that wasn't half the distance of the goal. I don't know that it would have necessarily made a difference because you give this potent Harvest Christian offense first and goal at the nine as compared to first and goal at the two. They're probably still scoring either way, but uh, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't blame for I don't blame Coach Wood for being puzzled by the way that that was ruled. And given that, I'm curious about the use of a timeout there so early in the half when your opponent is so close to the goal line already. Is that the best time to use that in the game that could come down to the wire? No, it's, it's a very good point. Kickoff goes through the back of the end zone. As we've said before, this wind has been a little bit of a factor here for <laughs> uh, both teams. So, obviously, Harvest using it to their advantage. Um, you know, with New Orleans subscription going against the wind now, um, we're interested to see if they continue to run the ball or if they're going to um, spread it out. looks like they've got some of their bigger guys out there, so I think they're going to try their hand at running the ball, which they've been decently successful at. They're not... Not a team that's just going to gash you for 15, 20 yards of play, but they're ones that are going to grind it out and, and try to wear you down. But remember, I, I mean, in the first quarter, they did struggle a little bit to move the football in their first couple of possessions, eventually broke loose for that one Luke Bales touchdown run, but a lot of their damage was done in the second quarter offensively as Bales gets to the corner and picks up about two-thirds of the requisite yardage on first and 15. They definitely had more success, though, with the wind in quarter number two, and they were able to move in front courtesy of that. 22 to 20 after two quarters of play, and 14 of those 22 coming in the second quarter. Rhett Elrod with a touchdown pass to Bales, and then Bales with a one-yard touchdown run that came after a big passing play from Rhett Elrod to Mason Lemmy. So they certainly moved it better when they had the, the freedom to be more multiple and, and less predictable offensively. We'll see if they can have more success here in the third quarter than they did in the first quarter when they're somewhat consigned to the running game because of the win. Handoff goes to Bales off left edge, and he's got some room again across midfield, across the 35 and out of bounds. Yeah, I think Coach Woods probably content to run this I formation offense. You know, he knows he can get some yardage. He's been able to get... Um, you know, two first downs, it looks like, and, and three plays. So he's, I think he's content to do it, obviously, wait until the fourth quarter to uh, try to throw the ball a little bit more. But, you know, if he can continue to score out of both offenses, that's, that's going to be good for him. Ninety-three seconds into the third quarter here in the TAP six-man Division II state championship game, New Braunfels Christian Academy and Harvest Christian in a six-point football game here early in the third. Straight eye formation once again for Mason Grimsley. Handoff yet again to Luke Bales and following his blockers and patient. And now he's got the corner inside the 20 and taken down right at the 10-yard line. Luke Bales, good patience behind his blockers, put his left hand right on the hip of his blocker and just rode him to the outside to get to the edge. Yeah, that was definitely excellent job there by Bales to read his block a lot of times and six man and 11 man as well but you can kind of draw up a few different things especially with some combo blocks and then you see that in six man as well but in six man you know i would say probably 60 70 percent of the time you've got to be able to block one on one and uh new Braunfels christian is doing a great job of that so far so first and goal from the 11 now again out of the straight eye toss to bales and down inside the five Four straight Bales runs for the Wildcat offense here on this drive, no surprise. And they're starting to see some real success with the persistence of this running game. Second and goal from the five. 
Bales again on the toss. Flag comes in behind the play. I'm say it'd probably be, I'm going to think holding against New Braunfels Christian just from where that flag came from. And so we'll see what our referee calls. It is indeed a hold against the New Braunfels offense. Tom Creeman's walking them back 10 yards here. That'll make second and goal quite a bit more difficult now from the 15. Nice drive from NBCA despite going against the wind as we were talking about. They struggled some in the first quarter dealing with this wind, but so far out of this I formation, every play of the drive, they've moved the ball substantially, but now they've got to overcome the holding penalty and now second and goal from the 15. Straight eye once again. Bales, nowhere to go. Ethan Isbell in the backfield immediately, as was Hudson Hayes. Coach Wood not happy with that play at all. That was that was a lot of um, a lot of lot of um, excuse me, a lot of traffic there up front, and Isbell was able to make a great play. So now third and goal from the 17. Straight eye for Grimsley. Bales on the toss. Has blockers out in front, tries to cut his way upfield, and it's down to the 10, maybe the 11. And it'll be fourth down and goal. Four minutes into the third quarter here. We've been talking about it over the course of uh, halftime, how as good as New Braunfels Christian Academy played to be leading by two at halftime, it still kind of felt like they were the ones that were teetering, that Harvest, with as talented as they are, could make something happen in a blink and all of a sudden pull away in this football game. Now facing fourth and goal from the 11 midway through quarter number three. This feels like an opportunity for NBCA where they need to capitalize here and find the end zone. Absolutely. They're going to be facing this man defense of Harvest, so we'll see if they can. And now they're going to use another timeout. Two timeouts already spent by NBCA in the first four minutes and 32 seconds of the third quarter. Well, I know you can't take them with you, but he, he's definitely getting rid of them quicker than you want to, especially if this game's going to be close in the fourth quarter. You know, I, there's a part of me that would tend to agree that, you, you know, you don't want to use timeouts this early on in the half because you want to use them in what you hope will be a close game in the fourth quarter. I can understand, though, just as I was saying before about how they, they you know, kind of feels like they're the ones that are teetering, that, you know, this could go squirrely for them pretty quickly with how talented Harvest Christian is. I could understand if Perry Myers' retort to that would be, I'm trying to make sure that it's a close game in the fourth quarter first before I can even worry about needing timeouts for that point. So this is a very important play as much as any fourth quarter play may potentially be. And they're trying to make sure that they find pay dirt and at least even this game up, if not take the lead back. Fourth and goal from the 11. Harvest Christian coming out in man defense. And a spread formation for Rhett Elrod, the quarterback. Has to throw it. Pressure in his face. Fires into the end zone. Single coverage. Doubled up eventually, but he, he makes the it. catch. Touchdown, NBCA. That was an impressive catch there by the receiver. Impressive play. What a grab by Mason Lemmy right at the goal line, and NBCA has tied it up once again. Here comes the replay. He had Duncan Severance in his face, falling away, heaves it to the end zone into what eventually became double coverage by the time the ball got there. But Mason Lemmy able to haul it in right at the goal line, and they tie it up at 28 all. Extra point is up and through for two more, and... New Braunfels Christian Academy back in front, 30-28. to 28. A great throw coming all the way across the field. Lemmy with great concentration was able to get there. What a game we have. 
Man, that was huge. That was, um, you know, was great for them to be able to complete that pass, to be able to get that touchdown. You know, gives them a, a two-point lead right now. I think if they hadn't scored on that one, that might have been a tough, wouldn't say backbreaker play, but definitely a tough play to rebound from. So a uh, good job for New Braunfels Christian to be able to convert on that and be able to uh, finish that drive. That's huge. I think that's going to definitely help them as they continue to go deeper and deeper into this third quarter. I told you it was a great time out he took. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, uh, it paid off. That's right. It very clearly paid off. They find the end zone and move back in front by two. We kind of joked earlier about the sixmanfootball.com and their spreads and how they were favored to win by 38 was Harvest Christian. I got to imagine the kids from New Braunfels see that kind of thing and, you know, that impacts what they do and, and, and the kind of fire they come out with. Uh, the onside kick recovered by Harvest Christian there and they'll take it at their own 38-yard line. You got to imagine these kids see that kind of thing and, 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 and want to come out and, and, and prove people wrong and show that they can play with and, and perhaps beat a really talented Harvest Christian team. And, and right now, midway through the third quarter with a two-point lead, how do you argue with it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the six-man football website, definitely great, a great tool for coaches, parents, uh, kids alike to be able to really, you know, share their six-man experiences and knowledge with the world. Uh, Granger and, and Lehman Sanders that run it. You know, it's kind of like the old BS or sorry, BCS system. You know, it's based on strength of schedule and all that. And so... Um, Your Freudian slip was rather accurate, by yeah, the way. Noted. Firing on the near side through the hands of Bradley Peterson. He had he had him open. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, you see those and you're like, well, you know, you could see it happening, but, you know, it's just like everything else, you know, sports betting and all that. And the reason you play the game, you know, kind of like, you know, NC State in 83 over Houston. And <laughs> you look at other, you know, instances like that, 1980, you know, U.S. hockey team over – or the Russians, it's just, you know, there's a reason we play the game. And so we'll see uh, see how these guys continue to uh, continue to fight with a little over five minutes left to go in this third quarter. That's why they play the game, and that's why we love to watch, because things like this can happen. Harvest Christian flags at the snap on second down and 15. It's going to be a false start against the Saints offense. All of a sudden has a feeling like momentum is comfortably with NBCA, at least for the moment. Going back to that last play where Peterson had plenty of room, but the ball went right through his hands, and now a penalty to set them back a little further. Penalties stalled one of their drives in the first half, which you know was probably the reason they were down two points at halftime. So hopefully Harvest can rebound. If not, this could allow NBCA to get on top even more. 5-11 to play third quarter, second down and 20. Harvest Christian trying to steal some of that momentum back and overcome a big penalty. Instead, Peterson goes down and he grabbed his knee immediately. And this is huge. 1,300 rushing yards and 25 touchdowns on the season for Bradley Peterson, one of the best players for this Saints offense. And down on the field, grabbing at his right knee. We'll step aside for a moment, but we'll come back and give you an update here on TAPS TV. Aiden loves playing baseball. He's in his element when he picks up a baseball bat. When Aiden tore his ACL last year, we were all devastated. We didn't think that a 13-year-old could have a problem such as that. Children's Health Andrews Institute for Orthopedic and Sports Medicine not only repaired Aiden's ACL, but they gave him the knowledge and skills to prevent any future injuries. Now, less than a year later, he's back to hitting homers and doing phenomenal.
Bradley Peterson, the junior running back for Harvest Christian, still down on the field at the 33-yard line. They've brought the card out. An immensely talented runner of the football. Already has a touchdown on the day. He actually started the scoring this afternoon with a 39-yard touchdown run just a couple minutes into this football game. Went down immediately as that play began before he had even gotten to the line of scrimmage. Non-contact injuries always, always concern you and you certainly hope that this young man is going to be okay. While we have a moment, we want to send a thank you to Children's Health Andrews Institute for their presence and continued support at all TAPS events and for our student athletes as well. Bradley Peterson up on his feet and being helped to the cart now. I'm interested to see what Coach Myers does here on offense. Obviously, Peters has been a huge, huge um, workhorse for them on the offensive side of the ball. So, interested to see if Coach Huck will be their offensive coordinator, dials up some more passing here. Or trying to spread it out more. I mean, we know Hunter Estel can move at the quarterback position. So, um, you know, we'll see what they do. Obviously, it's a, a game changer for sure, and not in a good way because you never want to see anybody go down. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we'll have to see how, how they adjust because, you know, you do have those times in practices where, like, okay, well, so-and-so got hurt. What are we going to do? You know, you always have to plan for situations. Peterson carted to the sideline. Ethan Isbell. A junior who's made some plays today. He's kind of their seventh man, so to speak, to use a, some kind of an extended metaphor from basketball parlance. He's kind of their utility back that knows multiple positions on the offense, and he'll probably be their, their first option to bring on the field. Estill finds an open man, and leaping over defenders is Duncan Severance. Gets across midfield down to the 33. And we've heard about Severance. You have to imagine he's one they're going to lean on here for the duration of this game with Peterson out. Fourth down is a little more manageable thanks to the play that Severance made there. Fourth down and five. They've got to get to the 27-yard line. I think they're definitely going to spread it out again here. You know, with Estel's arm, he's got a pretty quick release, you know, good strength. He's been able to deliver those good throws, so I think if they can continue to spread it out, don't know if it's going to stop a lot. Um, you know, still think they'll be able to move the ball, but definitely it'll be interesting come the, come this play and if they get closer. Estel has to throw it and does on the far side into the waiting arms of Duncan Severance inside the 15. First down. What a catch. Here's the replay. Heaves it all the way across the field. Severance out positions him, maintains control, excellent catch. Now Mason Lemmy was thinking interception, and Severance just outbodied him to the football. I'm sure Duck and Severance probably going back to huddle and being like, that's why you're in the weight room. I mean, <laughs> plays like that where you can outmuscle a defender, that was huge. First and goal from the 14. Handoff. Look out. Wyatt Green trying to break a tackle and can. Nice job by Mason Lemmy to grab an ankle and not let go. Lemmy all 5'8", 150 pounds of him. Certainly outsized by Wyatt Green, but held on for dear life. And the end result is a pickup of about three. It'll be second and goal from the 11. And that's one of the wonderful things about six, man, is you allow guys like Mason Lemmy. Not a big guy, but guy definitely tough and gritty to be able to succeed because obviously, you know, at a 5A or 6A school, he probably wouldn't get to play that much. Second down and goal. They pitch it back to Estill, the spread back, trying to get the corner on the right-hand side. He's got that. He, can he get to the pylon? Yes, he can. Touchdown, Hunter Estill. Harvest back in front. Good play there to put Estill back at the running back position. You kind of think that New Boston's Christian knew he's probably going to throw it, but 
Estel, excellent job getting the corner there. Great block there on the edge by Harvest Christian to be able to get him in for that touchdown. This uh, six point is going to be huge here. If it can, it'll give him a touchdown lead. If not, then that, you know, kind of goes back to the, wouldn't say shootout, but just kind of back and forth ball game that we've had here at Midway. Severance on to try and add two more. And he does. 36-30, Harvest Christian able to put eight on the board, go back in front by six on the 11-yard Hunter Estill touchdown run. Impressive from Harvest Christian to be able to, one, move the football down the field and overcome some early penalties on the drive, but to me more so to overcome the emotional moment that that was to see one of their best players in Bradley Peterson go down, frankly, in a heap in the middle of the field. Struggle back to his feet. He is being tended to still on the sidelines, which I suppose is at least somewhat good news that he's being tended to on the sidelines and not uh, being taken elsewhere to be looked at. But it certainly appeared that Bradley Peterson's day ended just a few moments ago. But for Harvest Christian to be able to drive down the field without one of their best players and find the end zone and take the lead back was very impressive. They maintained their composure. They maintained their wits. They converted an important down. And, and Severance even uh, very wisely held up a block that kept the only defender that might have stopped that touchdown there. Kickoff through the back of the end zone, and NBCA will take over at their own 20 after the touchback. The first game of the day, we saw a, lot of, uh, a couple of runs. It was a very nice start by Weatherford Christian. Took a 26-8 lead, but then a big run from Heritage to take the lead back and win the football game. This game has been much more back and forth. All game long, these two teams have exchanged blows. Harvest Christian jumped out to a 20-8 lead after back-to-back -back scores from uh, throwing scores from Hunter Estill. Wildcats answered back with two touchdowns of their own to lead by two at halftime, and now these two teams have exchanged touchdowns here in half number two. Flags before the snap here on first and 15 for New Braunfels Christian, and first and 15 will become first and 20. New Braunfels Christian once again going into the win. They're still kind of content to stay in that I formation offense. Biggest thing is they're just going to have to get those blocks up front, which they've done a pretty good job so far, definitely. Um, you know, have done better than they've, um, you know, than they did in the first half with some of their, some of their drives. But if they can, I think if they can really continue to wear on this Harvest team, it might really help in their favor. First and twenty now. Four men on the line of scrimmage for the Harvest defense, and they're able to cut the the play down right there at the line of scrimmage. Hudson Hayes making the play from behind. Only once all this season has Harvest Christian had to go a full four quarters to win a football game. They did so against Abilene Christian in the final week of the regular season, a 66-52 win. Today they're at the very least going to have to go into the fourth, and I can't imagine this game's going to all of a sudden become a 45-point deficit in the final uh, 12 minutes and 51 seconds we have left to play here. So they're going to have to go a full 40 minutes to pick up a win here in the state championship game, and New Braunfels Christian is not going to make it easy on him. Luke Bales gets the toss on the left-hand side, tries to get the corner, gets around it some, and gets out to the 28-yard line. And that will make third down a little more manageable. Bales has been impressive today. He's been able to get some yardage, definitely some tough yardage as well uh, against this Harvest Saints defense. Big thing is he's able to give them, you know, manageable third and fourth downs. The... A lot of times, you know, if you can't really get your run offense going, it kind of puts you in a third and long position. But, you know, most of the time they've been in third and seven, third and eight, or third and five. This particular one will be third and eight, and they're in the straight eye with Bales dotting it. He'll get the toss. Trying to get the outside. Breaks one tackle, lowers his shoulder into another, but he's going to be short. About a yard and a half short of the line to gain. It'll be fourth down. Christian. 
Ball sitting right at the 34, so call it an even one. And New Braunfels Christian with a big play right here. They do not want to give the football back to Harvest, already with a six-point lead in their own territory. They're already down to only one timeout left. They got four seconds on the play clock. They rush to the line of scrimmage. They get the snap off. Well, they were going to get the snap off, but they decide to use the timeout instead. And that's their last timeout of the half. Yes, it is. New Braunfels Christian Academy out of timeouts with 11 minutes and 47 seconds left to play in this football game. In what has been a tight game all afternoon. They face fourth down and one out of this timeout. They were looking to the near sideline, trying to, I don't know if they were trying to figure out what the play was going to be. There was definitely some confusion as they stood in the huddle. And then eventually I think they realized they were running out of time on the play clock and rushed to the line of scrimmage. They did snap the football before the clock got to uh, double zeros on the play clock. They would have avoided the delay of game penalty. But they use the timeout instead, and now here comes fourth and one once again out of the straight eye. It's Bales on the toss. He's got it. He's got the first down, and if he could have kept his feet, he would have scored. Luke Bales easily with the first down, and they're across midfield. There was nobody there. No. If he was able to stay on his feet and just kind of continue the spin that he did as he went through the hole, he had nothing but the end zone in front of him. He does get the first down, though, across midfield, and he'll get the toss again here on first and 15. The interesting thing you can see if you're watching from home, Harvest Christian is, you know, they're trying to funnel things inside, but the problem is, is they're giving up about four or five yards every time mm -hmm. that they go up the middle. So if they're content to give that up, they're going to allow New Braunfels Christian to continue to grind out this time, continue to grind out clock, and continue to grind on them. Because with only playing six or seven guys, you know, you're – one of your better ones sitting on the sidelines. You know, it's it's going to be tough. They're going to have to figure out something here. Second down and 10. Bales on the toss trying to get to the outside. Severance ushers him out of bounds at the 30. While we're on the topic of one of their better ones going down, Bradley Peterson, you may be able to see him in the frame. Number two on crutches just beyond the midfield stripe with an ice pack on that right knee. Certainly appears his day is done, obviously, but while he was out there, he played very, very well, but a big a big injury, frankly, for, for Harvest Christian. There's no other way to put it. He's, he's one of their best players, and not having him for the final quarter and change makes an impact. Third down and six. Final minute of the third quarter, and Bales will get the toss once again. One thing I'm noticing with this Harfin, sorry, Harvest defense is they're just not as aggressive as they were before. Kind of sitting on their heels, um, not really trying to get that push up front. If you're going to allow the New Braunfels Christian offense to dictate the tempo and dictate what's going to go on, it's going to be tough. And how much of that is a function of this NBCA game plan? I mean, basically the offensive coordinator is drawing up which way Bales is going to go this time, and that is taking its toll over the course of this game, it would appear, to New Braunfels' credit. Final seconds of the third quarter, and they face fourth down and a yard. They do snap it before the final gun of the fourth quarter. Did he get the first down by that spot? It looks very close. Might need a measurement on this one. The line judge on the near side seemed to have a more favorable spot for New Braunfels Christian, and they say first down on the final play of quarter number three. Luke Bales lowers his shoulder and gets the first down just barely. NBCA ball driving, trying to even this game up. We'll be back for the fourth quarter on TAPS TV.
fourth quarter action from Midway ISD's Panther Stadium. First and 15 for the New Braunfels Christian Academy offense. And surprise, surprise, it's a toss to Luke Bales on first and 15 as he runs up the back of one of his blockers and picks up about four on the play. Yeah, New Braunfels Christian definitely wanted to use this time up. I mean, obviously, you know, they're down six, but they're able to move the ball pretty consistently on every down. You know, they have used all three of their timeouts, so they don't really want to get to a situation where they allow harvest a lot of time. So they're definitely going to kind of use up as much as they can. If they can continue to grind these yards out, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting last nine minutes. Second down and 12. Bales with a handoff again, and he's got a lot of space. Bales trying to get to the pylon. Touchdown. What an unbelievable game this young man is having. Luke Bales with his fourth touchdown of the day. Ties the game up at 36 points apiece for the moment and a chance for the Wildcats to go in front if they can make the two-point PAT here. And Bales puts it through, and they take the lead once again. Extra points have been huge here, and so got the two-point lead, nine, nine minutes and change here to go in the fourth quarter. We'll see how Harvest, obviously down one of their better players, see how they can rebound to be able to uh, see if they can capture this TAPS Division II state championship. Both teams with five touchdowns on the day, but New Braunfels Christian Academy has been more effective with their two-point PATs. And as a result, they lead by two. Nine minutes and ten seconds on the clock here in the fourth quarter. And now the question becomes, what is this Harvest Christian offense going into the wind where it is more difficult to throw the football for Hunter Estill when they don't have Bradley Peterson on the football field. Onside kick recovered once again by Harvest Christian. New Braunfels Christian Academy has tried, I believe, every single time that they've kicked the football off today. They haven't been able to recover one yet. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting play call. I mean, you can go either way on these. You can either kick it deep or onside it you know obviously you haven't kicked it deep at all so maybe they don't have a guy that can kick it deep and that's completely understandable a lot of teams don't but right. you got this win you might want to try to pin him back deep but you know everybody's got the reason so we'll see how it goes leads to first and 15 from the 32 for hunter estill and company handoff goes to wyatt green he's going to be their bell cow now out of the backfield with bradley peterson out of the game Green has been a, a huge part of their running game all season long, even with Peterson healthy. Don't get me wrong. He's, he's a very, very talented fullback. 26 rushing touchdowns on the year to lead the team coming into today's football game, and he's already got one today. So they're, they're not hurting by giving the ball to number 23, but we'll see a much heavier dose of him in the fourth quarter with Peterson off the football field. Second and 13 after a gain of two there on first down. Look for a pass here from Harvest Christian. They pitch it back for Estill. He's got the run pass option, trying to scramble away from pressure. Now looking deep up the left-hand side. He's got a complete in the hands of Duncan Severance. Severance makes one man miss, and he's inside the 20 to the 17. Duncan Severance is as advertised. He had his eyes on Severance the entire time. Even when he had to shake off the defender, he was turning around looking for him, and thankfully for Harvest Christian, able to find him all the way across the field. Yeah, that was an impressive pitch and catch from Estill to Severance. Severance, he has been as good as advertised at receiver in this game for sure. So first and 15 now from the 18-yard line. They pitch it back to Estill again. Now he'll try and run it up the left sideline. Gets the corner, but not a, not a whole lot more. Slung out of bounds at the 13. Here. 
Estill has made a lot of plays in the passing game over the course of today, but he's very dangerous keeping the ball in his own hands as well. He's got some speed to get around that corner. Second and 11 from the 13. Under center this time. They give it back to Estill. Throws it into the end zone. Did he hang on to it? Yes, he did. It was a hand fight between the receiver and the defensive back, and Hudson Hayes won the hand fight and held on for the touchdown. Harvest back in front. Incredible. I mean, we talked about the weapons for Harvest, and you have a, such a big player go down in Peterson, and, and they don't miss a beat. Two straight possessions with touchdowns without them. Unbelievable the weaponry available to this Saints team. Hayes with his second touchdown reception of the day. This time from 13 yards out. They have blocked a handful of extra points today as you hear the near side fans from New Braunfels Christian cheering for. They don't get to this one and it's up and through and Harvest in front by six once again, 44-38. That was quite a fight from Hudson Hayes to grab that football, rip it away from the defender, and then he kind of had to re-catch the football as it bounced off his chest and away. Let's see if they can get another look at it here. I think that's what they're trying to cue up right here. Able to snare it before it hit the turf. And that puts Harvest back in front by six. Yeah, this is... It's definitely going to come down to the last few minutes. Both teams being able to score. Harvest, I would say, probably can score a little bit quicker, but not by much, especially if New Braunfels Christian decides to go with their spread game. Uh, be interesting to see, obviously, now that New Braunfels Christian has the wind, um, if they continue to stay with the tide or if they continue to grind it out. I, I would think they'd probably continue to grind it out, you know, uh, use what got you here and just um, continue to go that way. It's definitely going to be a... Uh, you know, edge of your seat ball game probably here till the last horn sounds. Since it was 20 to 14 late in the second quarter, these two teams have exchanged touchdowns six times. New Braunfels scored to take the lead with 24 seconds left in the second quarter. Luke Bales with a touchdown run. Wyatt Green with a touchdown to give Harvest the lead back. Elrod to Lemmy, Wildcats back in front. Estill with an 11-yard touchdown run. Harvest Christian back in front, 36-30. to And then Luke Bales with a touchdown run to give New Braunfels the lead in the fourth quarter. And then as we just saw moments ago, Estill to Hudson Hayes for the second time today. And Harvest Christian goes back in front, and now they kick the onside kick, comfortably recovered by New Braunfels Christian. And they'll have the football at their own 38-yard line. Down by six with 7.31 on the clock in the fourth quarter. Trying to earn a state championship. If we can have all seven games this weekend like this, where do I sign? Yeah, this has been some great football to watch. Um, you know, obviously the Division Three game was a little bit more decided by this time in the game, but still was a True. solid game but for sure. But, yeah, this has been some great football so far. NBCA from their own 38, down six, I formation, Bales. Breaks the first tackle, he's trying to get to the corner. Stiff arm to get the first down and then some. Inside the 20, foot race up the left sideline, dives into the end zone, touchdown. This kid is unbelievable. 41 Thanks. yards, 42 yards. 42 that. yards for the touchdown for Luke Bales. His fifth of the day. Yeah, we talked about earlier in this game how fast Bales is. But my goodness, he showed how strong he was getting a stiff arm and then, you know, having the strength to run through the rest of those runners right there and, and, and finish on the goal line. And now it's Bales out there to kick the two-point PAT and put his team back in front yet again. They've been good today on all but one 
And that holds 46-44. NBCA back in front. 16 seconds between touchdowns. Excellent play calling there by Coach Woods to be able to get that field opened up. You know, with this uh, power eye offense, you know, people think it's kind of a grind out offense, and it can be for a long time, and it can, you know, really wear on the other team. But if you've got a running back, especially like what New Braunfels Christian has, you can really get some big plays off of it, and we saw right there. 7.20 on the clock, fourth quarter. 46-44, New Braunfels Christian Academy. 12, and I beg your pardon, 11-1 and one on the year. Looking for that 12th victory and a state championship against 13-0 Harvest Christian out of District 1. Both of these teams lost in the state semis a year ago. This year around further and duking it out for the state title, and it has been a heavyweight fight all night long. Onside kick attempt once again here for New Braunfels Christian Academy. High hop and an opportunity at it this time. Can they get on top of it? Yes, they do. Wildcat football. That was a huge play there for the Wildcats. You know, got the bounce on the onside and then were able to, you know, challenge the cover guy for it. And man, that was huge. And New Braunfels Christian can go down and score on this one. That may seal it from them because they've been able to duke it out and go score for score uh, with the Saints. Big hop on the onside kick. Gave them an opportunity at it, and they go jump on top of the football at the 30-yard line. And now here comes the I formation once again. NBCA up by two and now with possession of the football. Bales. Can he go for it again? Gets to the edge. Here goes Bales again. Bales to the end zone. Great play there by Bales. Huge answer. That's, that's the way you want it done as a coach. You want to be able to go out there, get an onside kick, and go score real quick, especially in a game like this where it's been very, you know, back and forth. This is huge for NBCA. Harvest really is going to have to respond well on the next kickoff return and next offensive possession if they want to stay in this ball game because right now you know the way this game has been going for the last two two and a half quarters is they're going to have to come up with something they have no did answer they, for bales right now wait a minute did they mark him out of bounds they must have marked him out of bounds okay so it's first and goal at the five it didn't appear that he was all that close to the sideline but no touchdown on the board yet Change that one play later. Now it's a touchdown at NBCA up by eight. NBCA definitely excited, definitely see on their sideline, jumping up and down, getting their fans excited. You know, they were in the state game in 2016, weren't able to pull it out. But they're inching closer and closer to that coveted state title. And this is a big PAT right here because it's the difference between it being a one score or a two score game. 52 44 as it stands right now. If Luke Bales can put this through, it would be a 10 point game and Harvest would have to score twice. He pulled it to the left. No good. And it stays 52 44. Harvest still within a touchdown. That is a touchdown and a two point PAT. That is a big development right there. Yep, let's see if Harvest can respond. If they, if they can get points on the board and they can get that extra point, they can tie it up. But, you know, obviously getting the, the kickoff return at the beginning of the second half, that kind of gave them the, the chance to, you know, continue to, you know, have that kind of start and be able to maybe finish. But now they're, they're kind of in that reverse position, so they have got to score here. If they don't, that could mean a New Braunfels Christian victory. We talked about the strategy of keeping the ball out of the hands of Harvest Christian. Now you have to imagine they're feeling a little bit of relief to hopefully get the ball back if they can field it here. I imagine another onside kick coming. But they want to get the hands out of New Braunfels' hands now. The ball, excuse me. 
52-44, 7.03 on the clock, fourth quarter. Harvest has all three timeouts left. NBCA has used all three of their timeouts. They will line up to kick the onside kick yet again as they have done all night. Gavin Kelly to send it toward the near sideline. He executed it brilliantly last time. This one a little bit more of a line drive and Duncan Severance is going to take it on the hop and he's going to try and return it. Gets down to the 39-yard line on their own side of the field. I thought maybe New Braunfels Christian would try to kind of pooch kick it like they did earlier in the game. They were able to really, um, you know, set the Harvest Christian Saints offense back probably about the 5 or 10-yard line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, didn't do it there, but, you know, obviously if they could have gotten another onside recovery, that would have, wouldn't say sealed it, but, man, that would have been huge. So 6.58 on the clock. The way that these two teams are scoring, we'll see about six more touchdowns between now and the end of the football game. How far apart were those last two Bales touchdowns? So we've seen three touchdowns now in the last 33 seconds. <laughs> 7.36 on the clock. Harvest Christian scored to take the lead, 44-38. And now they're going to try and go score again. Duncan Severance is breaking free. Severance up the left sideline. Foot race to the pylon. Duncan Severance, touchdown. Make it four touchdowns in under a minute. Coach, uh, Coach Wood... Trying to signal for a false start. Yeah, it looked I, like they started a little bit early. Maybe it's just a uh, perfect time, and we'll see on the – no, it didn't really show it there. But, man, Severance definitely shows the strength he has right there to uh, finish on that play. Heck of a play call there by uh, Josh Hugby, their offensive coordinator. I thought I saw a little movement early, and then it seemed as if the players thought they saw the same thing. It didn't look like everybody was going 100% there. We'll see if we can catch another replay after the PAT here, but this is a very important two-point kick right here to tie, try and tie the game with 6.49 left. Severance, who just scored the touchdown, kicking for two. Yes, sir, tie game, 52 all. So let's, let's see if, if they can cue up a replay for us one more time here and see the touchdown once more. Here we go. I don't know if we I don't know if we caught it early enough to see whether or not there was a false start, but you do see Duncan Severance going off the left sideline very clearly. He is uh, the heck of, a, heck of a football player, and he's made a couple of big plays today for Harvest Christian. That one to help them tie the football game up. Yeah, that's the one thing about both of these teams. They've definitely got great senior leadership. You know, Harvest obviously with Duncan Severance and. Um, and their quarterback and with obviously Mr. Peterson going out earlier, but they've had some great senior leadership so much so that's really helped them stay in this game. Also, New Braunfels Christian has some senior leaders that have really stepped up. You know, obviously it's see a lot of times, especially in college football, you know, with these younger players that are able to make some plays. But in a game like this, you know, really back and forth, it's great to have that veteran leadership to kind of guide you through these uh, these hairy situations. Lights are on here at Panther Stadium. Sun has gone down. Tie football game, fourth quarter, and an onside kick here from Harvest Christian, scooped up by New Braunfels Christian, and they're going to bring it across midfield to the 39 on Harvest side of the field. And after all the back and forth that we've seen in this second half, tied at 52 with 6.45 to play in the fourth. And who said six-man football is not fun to watch? I mean, this is... Back and forth football, score, score, score. I mean, obviously sometimes it gets called basketball on grass, but this has been a fun game to watch. I'm not sure basketball on grass is such a pejorative thing. This is fun to watch. 52 all, and here comes NBCA trying to find an answer. It's Bales once again, because who else would it be? Breaks a tackle into the clear, flag down behind the play as he was dragged down right at the sticks. I think they ripped his jersey through all that. Yeah, I think they're going to call some sort of illegal blocking here. And it is indeed a hold against NBCA, according to Tom uh, Tom Creamans, our official. I think that's going to probably be uh, push it back to like a first and 20 from where the hold happened. Which the way that New Braunfels Christian is running the ball, I mean, as a coach, you don't want to have that, but... Uh, the way they've been able to run the ball, uh, 
I don't think it's going to stop him too much. Pretty good guess out of you. First and 19 is what they'll call it here. Now back on their own side of the field for NBCA at the 37. Straight eye. Pitch to Bales. And how about that? For the first time in what feels like an hour, they defended it. Duncan Severance with a very nice play. Maybe a gain of a yard for Bales. I think if they can continue to uh, not allow him to get those extra yards, it's going to be huge. You know, with six six minutes and counting, they, they've really kind of got to get their stops. So they can't can't allow to just go back and forth in New Orleans with Christian. So second down and 18 now. We have seen the same look and basically the same play or some variation of the same play at NBCA. Basically the whole second half, either a toss or a handoff to Luke Bales. The handoff there gets him back to the original line of scrimmage and it'll be third down and 15 and now they will go spread as here comes Rhett Elrod. Corbin Fowler wrapping up Bales on that last play. Five fifteen to play fourth quarter and now a timeout called by Harvest Christian. We have lost Matt Tarbutton. He's got to head down to the field here over the course of these last five minutes or so of quarter number four to be down there for the trophy presentation. So Gabe and I will take you guys the rest of the way. That's right, neither of these teams are strangers to scoring. Harvest Christian has not scored fewer than 48 points all season. NBCA has not scored fewer than 52. I'm just not so sure they're used to their opponents doing the same thing during the same game. Yeah, there's no doubt of that. Harvest Christian had shut out eight of their 13 opponents so far this year, giving up an average of just eight points per game and that eight point per game average was ballooned substantially by giving up 52 of the 104 points they've given up this season to Abilene Christian. Quite a few more today here against New Braunfels Christian and they're trying to add to it on third down and 15. Spread formation, Elrod in there a quarterback. High snap but he's got it. He's gonna have to throw and it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. A nice defensive play by Duncan Severance, waving to the far side crowd, fired up and forcing fourth and 15. Here's the replay, Severance gets his hand up. Here it comes, hits the left hand, got it up right in time to disrupt that play. So now fourth and 15 for NBCA. Their offense has been so potent in this second half. 30 points on the board after halftime, but now facing a crucial fourth down in a tie game. Elrod over the middle, knocked down, incomplete. Harvest Christian football at midfield. Johnny on the spot was number 15. That's I almost Ethan said Isbell. Hunt. Excuse me, thank you. Yes, Isbell right on time there. So it'll be first and 15, Harvest Christian football in a tie game, 5.03 on the clock, fourth quarter, and really the first defensive stop we've seen here in the second half. These two teams have exchanged scores throughout the second half. The only circumstance in which either team scored consecutively was New Braunfels Christian after they recovered the onside kick to take the lead 52-44 on back-to-back -back Luke Bales touchdown runs. But now here comes Harvest Christian. Hand off to Wyatt Green. Steps through one tackle, tried to break another but couldn't. Picks up six and he's down to the 35 on New Braunfels side of the field. Still a lot of time on the clock, but it is important that New Braunfels Christian does not have any timeouts left. Meanwhile, Harvest Christian still with two in their pocket. Estel set up in the spread back. They pitch it back to him. 
Run pass option, and he's got the near sideline. He's got a lot of room on the near sideline. Hunter Estel inside the 15, stumbles down inside the 10. It's first and goal. There's not a fan in this stadium who isn't nervous right now. There's not a player inside this stadium that isn't nervous right now. 52 apiece. Four minutes, 10 seconds in moving fourth quarter. First and goal for Harvest Christian. Trying to put a bow on a 14-0 state championship season. But the Wildcats 3-3 defense trying to stand in the way. Spread back again for Estill. Gets the pitch, coming near side. He's going to run for it. Trying to get the corner, lowers his shoulder to the pylon. Touchdown! And the Harvest Christian offensive machine just keeps going. What a game. Hunter Estill with the eight-yard touchdown run just moments after a big run up the near sideline to put him inside the 10. 58-52, Harvest in front. And they'll line up to try a two-point kick here to try and extend the lead. Duncan Severance to kick for two. Out of the hold of Ethan Isbill, it's up and through. 60 to 52, Harvest Christian on top. 112 combined points in this game, and there's still 341 on the clock. We've seen only one defensive stop here in the second half, and that has been, so far, the difference in the football game. Harvest in front by eight, thanks to a touchdown right after their defensive stop of NBCA. But still plenty of time for the Wildcats to answer here. What was supposed to be, according to the experts, a blowout. Anything but. Back and forth the entire second half. And an opportunity for NBCA to extend that back and forth nature of this football game as they'll get it back here with 3.41 left on the clock in the fourth. They do not have a timeout. That is important, but it's not critical just yet. There's still plenty of time. And as these teams continue to trade heavyweight punches, you have to wonder, the longer this goes on, does that help the team's mentality or does it make it harder? They'll kick it deep. Retreating to his one-yard line and taking it on the run is Mason Lemmy. Lemmy coming to the near side and slung down from behind. Duncan Severance did a good job to undercut him. Three thirty-four, fourth quarter. First and 15 from their own 19-yard line for the NBCA Wildcats. The tap six-man Division II state championship hanging in the balance. Straight eye dotted by Luke Bales. He gets the handoff. Breaks the first tackle, sheds another, dives forward to the 27. Give him eight on the first play of the drive. These Harvest Christian players have been on the field a long time today. You have to imagine they're digging deep to find that extra gear. Estill, Severance, Hayes, Green, Fowler, and Isbell. The six defenders that Play pretty much every snap, offense and defense. This time they string Bales out and only let him pick up about two. It'll be third down and call it five. Two forty-one and moving fourth quarter. 
time. Not yet a critical, uh, not a critical factor just yet, but he's getting there in a hurry. Straight eye again. Bales behind Mason Grimsley. Gets the toss. Cuts back and in the backfield to make the play is Severance. A huge third down stop there. Severance has been a monster in this game on both sides of the ball. Sets up a critical fourth down and five. Spread unit coming out on the field now for NBCA. Red Elrod. Seventeen seconds on the play clock as he looks to the near side. As Josh Wood and company try to set up what will be, they hope, a fourth down conversion on fourth and five from their own 29. High snap. Uh -oh. Elrod fumbles it. Has to hop on top of it. It's wild catch. It's Harvest Christian football inside the 25. And the Wildcats have no timeouts remaining. With 1.39 on the clock, this is Harvest Christians to put on ice. What a painfully anticlimactic way for a fantastic football game to come to an end. The snap was a little bit too high for Red Elrod, and he couldn't squeeze it. And now just a couple of kneel downs away. They'll throw a flag on that as they dive in and try and make a play on the kneel down. Boy, that's right. We saw a few high snaps when they would come into this formation. They always seem to be able to bring them down and usually yeah, every turn time. them into a productive, positive play. But that, man, so untimely. The penalty and move the ball down to the 11-yard line. But again, just kneel downs away from putting this one on ice. It's first down and five now. I beg your pardon, first and goal. Fresh set of downs, first and goal from the 11. But they'll just kneel on it two or three times and celebrate a state championship. What a fourth quarter this was. What a second half this was from both of these two football teams. The only disappointment here is that it wasn't a more dramatic finish to the football game. It was a, it was a, it's a rough way for the game to end. But that second half was just electric. Back and forth all throughout the third and fourth quarter. And the fourth quarter was sensational. So entertaining. One of these teams was going to come away with the state championship in their first in school history. 46 combined points in the fourth quarter alone tonight. <laughs> the final eight coming on a touchdown run by Hunter Estill, and that is what clinches a state championship. Harvest Christian in an absolute barn burner, 60-52 to 52 over NBCA to claim the Taps Division II six-man state championship. What resilience by the Saints. They watched one of their best players go down and they weathered the storm that was MBCA and Luke Bales. What grit, what determination. And in a game where offense was unquestionably the story, Two defensive stops from Harvest Christian late in the fourth quarter proved to be the difference in the football game. They make the stop after they had tied the game up at 52 apiece that led to the Hunter Estill touchdown run. That was the biggest stop to me of the entire game. And then the stop on the final possession for NBCA as well, certainly aided, of course, by the high snap. But they had made some good defensive plays before that to even put NBCA into a fourth and, uh, fourth and long situation. Absolutely, and, and you know, we can only hope that the rest of the weekend lives up to this. What an exciting game. And we still got one more to do. We got one more today, four more over the course of the balance of the weekend. We're just getting started here at Panther Stadium. Matt Tarbutton is down on the sideline to help with the 
trophy presentation. We will come back here on TAPS TV in a matter of moments with that as Harvest Christian celebrates a TAPS Division II six-man state championship. Just about time for the trophy presentation here at Panther Stadium. They will award NBCA with their second place trophy first and then on the opposite side of the field, the victorious 14-0 Harvest Christian State Champion Saints will receive their trophy. We'll let you guys enjoy the presentation here from Panther Stadium. 60 to 52 the final score again 46 combined points in the fourth quarter alone 112 between these two teams over the course of this afternoon and into the evening a fantastic football game between two really talented teams that neither one of these teams deserve to lose today that was that was a special football game to watch and both of these guys were both of these teams were state championship caliber that's exactly right a thriller you know, and like you said, it's just a shame that one of these teams had to lose. Luke Bales on the day, even though New Braunfels comes up as the loser in this football game, to me, Luke Bales is the story of this football game. Six touchdowns, three of them in the fourth quarter alone, and the back-to-back -back touchdown runs to take a 46-44 lead and then extend that lead to 52-44 was a... What was just a wacky 40 second sequence 17 seconds between plays officially between the touchdown the 42 yard touchdown run to make it 46 44 that by the way came just 16 seconds after a Hunter Estel to Hudson Hayes touchdown pass to give Harvest Christian the lead back 44 38 it was just a bonker sequence back and forth and Bales was at the center of it all the two touchdowns back to back and at that point, we were just saying it as we were watching these two teams celebrate their, their championship trophies. At that point, it kind of felt like New Braunfels had, had taken control of the football game. 
big, big credit to Harvest Christian for bouncing back from that, bouncing back from the injury to Bradley Peterson, and being able to fight through all of that. Duncan Severance with a huge 41-yard touchdown to tie the football game up at 52 points apiece. He also kicked the two-point PAT that helped tie that game up. And then in the final minutes of the football game, Hunter Estill on the eight-yard touchdown run right after he had run up the near sideline to set up first and goal for Harvest Christian. Just, just a wacky football game. What's not to love about what we just watched over the course of the last two and a half hours? Absolutely. So so many storylines, all of them incredible. And, and just to put not too fine a point on it, you know, I won't be surprised if we don't see another performance uh, like we saw from, from, from Bales throughout the rest of this tournament. I'm just unbelievable. Uh, you know, that's not going to help him when he has to go home tonight with a second-place trophy. But I hope at some point they can look back and say, that was just an absolutely incredible performance and tip of the cap to both of these teams. You know, it's easy to be up here from the objective standpoint and, and just really, really enjoy what happened here this afternoon. So uh, great, great performance by both of these teams. They let it out all on the field, and that's all you can ask for as a fan of football. Luke Bales with six touchdowns in what will be his final game as a high school football player on his way to Liberty to play football next fall. It's a loss, and that will sting, I'm sure, but a pretty darn impressive way to put a bow on his high school football career, a six-touchdown performance from an absolute stud of a high school football player. But on the other side, Hunter Estill, five touchdowns of his own, including the game winner with three minutes and 41 seconds left on the clock in the fourth quarter for a 60-52 to win in favor of Harvest Christian, and the Saints claim the Taps Division II state championship. With that, this one is in the books. Our thanks to the entire TAPS TV team. Our producer here in the booth with us, Will Dixon. The director of media for TAPS TV, John Skees. The associate director of TAPS is Steve Prudhomme. And the executive director of TAPS is Brian Bunzelmeyer. Also a shout-out once again to the Midway ISD AV team. And uh, the director of that team is Caleb Overstreet. For Matt Tarbutton and Gabe Duarte here with me in the booth, I'm Mike Leslie. We hope you'll join us in a few hours for the Division I title game. In fact... In an hour, <laughs> if it is indeed still a 7 o'clock kickoff. Maybe it'll get pushed to 7.30. We'll try and keep you guys abreast of that. It looks like, based on the clock that I'm seeing to my left, that may indeed be the case. Looks like maybe a 7.30 kick in the TAPS Division One six six-man state championship game between Lake Hill Prep and Emory Wiener. So we hope you will, that we will see you guys in an hour and a half. But thanks so much for watching here in the TAPS Division Two state championship game. Your champions, once again, from Harvest Christian, a 60-52 to win to knock off New Braunfels Christian Academy. So long from Panther Stadium, everyone. We'll see you in 90 minutes.